That um that uh link you sent that's not letting me in on my phone or my uh iPad. Really? Every time it keeps coming up with some management thing. Um, I think. I th do you know what? I think we're being watched now. We're causing too much controversy. <laughs> wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't surprise me if we are being watched. We must be doing something right. It, it keeps coming up. Manage your privacy, and it says to click the link below. To, it's that cookies thing. Yeah. Right. But the problem is, I get a fingerprint scan thing come up at the top of the screen. But when yeah. I go to scroll down to click on the accept all data, won't allow me to do it. It's typical of that. Doesn't let me in. Oh, dear. So. Uh, hiya, Joe. My food arrived at bloody last, literally two minutes before I sat down. Hey, Joe. So it's going cold beside me. I've had my dinner. I had a, a, a spag bowl. And now I'm playing... Toblerone roulette. I have a bag of Toblerones and I'm just diving in and picking one at random. Oh, Listen, good. Thanks, Joe. I was going to say some jokes there, but I'm not going to bother. I'm a, I'm a bit shattered after uh, a whole day yesterday of uh, sorting out my parents' house. Um, ready to move in in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. But uh, I've uh, been uh, putting bags up in the loft and, and getting them out of the way, ready for when my mum and dad return in November so that they can go up there and sort it all out because I certainly ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, blame you. Don't blame me at all. <clears throat> Let me just slide this back there a bit. I'm, I'm still... I'm, I, I've been, this week, I have been um, checking up on some information about what we saw last week. Yeah. And I keep drawing a blank. Which bit of information? I can't, I can't find anything uh regards to what we saw in the forest last week. Yeah, th there wasn't, was it? There was, there were no, um, there was no international space station. There was no Chinese space station. There was no Starlink satellites, and there were no other scheduled stat satellites. So, whatever we well, saw was the, were U, UAPs, UFOs, whatever the hell you want to call it. But it seemed mighty odd that after those three went up and went across, all of a sudden three jets go as well. The thing was as well is with some with some of the tracker systems that you can get online. Yeah, you can actually backdate it. You can rewind them. And you can rewind them so far that you can get the trajectory from a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. And when I looked on the Starlink one, trajectory is totally out of place. Yeah. But the Starlink satellites, they all work in rows. That's right, yeah, because you can see them all. They're like in that, groups yeah. and they're all in a line. But what we saw that Saturday were not in a line. They were, they were three no. separate entities going in three separate directions. Um. I backtracked on the um, ISIS, the Chinese, uh, ISIS, ISS, the Chinese <laughs> space station. Shit, ISIS had got into space. Oh, that's that's <laughs> <laughs> aliens, um, so the International Space Station, the Chinese Space Station, backtracked on those, nothing in, in that area at that time. Yeah. Um, even <laughs> civilian and military aircraft, none in the area at that time. So we yeah. saw them three. Then we saw that flashing thing, whatever that was, and then we had the three jets fly over. Two of them were passenger jets. Yep. But that third and one, one of them, one the third one was a military jet, but it wasn't. It was a, a cargo. It wasn't a fighter jet. Okay. But you, so, well, you can see the difference between UAPs and normal planes, planes definitely, and or or our um, air traffic. There's a very big difference, isn't there? Yeah. Um, you know, so it just seemed weird that up to that point, we hadn't seen any aircraft fly over whatsoever. You know, from the walk down from the car park, while we were walking around in the forest and at the location, there was not a single jet flew over. Then soon after we saw those four things, 
the Jets were there. It was yeah, it was it was. Chore- it was almost like it was choreographed. It was, wasn't it? Um, for those of you who just joined us, and yeah, we're fine, thank you, Andy, mate. Um, last week when we went to Rendlesham Forest, um, we were taking a break in the filming, and we were leaning up against the uh, uh, UFO monument that's there, and we were looking up through the, the the gap in the trees from the the, the hollow that this place this thing's in. Um, and we watch three UA, UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to call them. We watch them all go over. Um, and the big difference is it's not like a, a shooting star. It's not like a meteorite. It's it's different. It's a set speed. It's not poof. It's like that. There's no flashing lights. There's no starboard aft. Nothing like that. It's one uniform color going over. And we saw three of them go over exactly over the spot that we were in where the alleged ufo landed we watched three ufos uaps go over and then as as we've just said um three uh terrestrial aircraft went over and there's a very very big difference in there very because obviously they've got the marker lights either side and tail light and uh, but the third one wasn't moving like a normal aircraft. No, it wasn't, was it? It was, it was going like it, that. It was going across, across our vision. It was doing a yeah. wave. That's right. Um, and that fourth one as well, where it flashed about six times, and then that was it. It was gone. Mm. It didn't move. It, it stayed solid. I spotted it above a tree, and it was flashing. And it, we all watched it flash about six times in total. That's right. And then you just and stopped flashing. The director were watching it, weren't you? Yeah. Um, and then, um, I don't know. It was it. It was a bit weird, actually, to actually go to somewhere like Rendlesham Forest. Neither of us had been there before, but we knew the history of it. Yeah. <laughs> and for us to actually go there, it 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 sort of created that sense of euphoria in a way. Was the fact that we've gone yeah. to. Yeah. The UK's very own Roswell. And we've stood in the spot where that UFO came down. Yeah. And and to actually witness something that we can't explain, whether it was a UFO or a UAP or, or our imaginations, we all saw it and there was what, eight of us there? Yeah. It wasn't our imagination. And, and you had three of them, three of them had missed it by going up back up to the car park, didn't they, to get some equipment. Yeah. So they were quite gutted that they missed yeah. it. Um, but afterwards, and I, I've looked at the pictures again, and that triangle formation of, of yeah. stars, what we thought were stars, yeah, I think is still pretty cool because the fact there's no like there's stars all around it, yeah, but there's not one single star inside that triangle, no. it's totally black. And then um, for those of you who haven't seen it, if you go onto the the group wall <clears throat> and just scroll down, you you should see it on there. I'm sure I'll put it on there because Wayne's got a really good uh, picture of it. Not, I've got a good picture. Of yeah, it. I've I've got a couple. With the, they were taken with two different exposures, and I think the yeah. same the same. Although it's the same picture taken with different exposure or uh, a different setting, there's still no stars in the triangle. <laughs> um. So I'm just reading what's going on in the chat room there. I didn't see any faces in that picture, but you know I don't have the gift. So, um, but yeah, the, um, the the pictures it's it was weird, wasn't it? Because we saw a black triangle, and then yep. literally mirrored opposite, wasn't it? On the other yep. side of the clearing <coughs> was another. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, <coughs> I'm, I'm dying. Carry on. <coughs> Basically, it was a mirror opposite. No, sorry. On the, the, the original triangle that we had seen was on one side of the clearing, and when we turned the other way, there was a mirror opposite of the triangle yeah. in the other on the other side of the clearing in the sky. Yeah. Um, so it was almost like there was two of them there, and they were just sitting there watching us. And it you say, looked... I was going to say, as you say, in, in the whole of that clearing, there was loads and loads of stars. Yeah. But in those two triangles, literally, e, 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 no stars whatsoever in that shape. On and, and, 
and again, the thing is, is that, you know, when you're there, you don't notice these things. No. But, you know, you know, anywhere else, like in a built-up area, like on a housing estate or anything, because of light pollution, you can't see a lot of the stars. But in Rendlesham Forest, in that clearing, you look up and you will see everything because there's no light pollution there whatsoever. Um, so you see could see I constellations. Can show it on there. Um, and you, you could see all sorts, but, you know, dumbfounded me. And then, uh, <coughs> yeah. obviously, bring it, yeah. Come on. See the three, yeah, that's it. For those of you in the chat room watching, those three dots, that's one of the triangles that was above us. This is a this is an actual photo of the triangle that was above <clears throat> myself and Wayne. And there's no stars in those dots. And you can't actually see the stars because those lights on the triangles were brighter than the stars. But the whole sky was covered in stars. But eh, inside there, there was no stars at all. And this had the ex mirror opposite. On the other side of the clearing, exactly the same. But this is the actual photo taken of, of the triangle that was above us. So what was it? it? And then obviously we had the circus roll into town. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, call me, call me a, um, I don't know, soothsayer. Um, <laughs> Nostradamus, one of the two. Um, we're all standing there, we're gathered around uh, the UFO. We've done a bit of filming, we got some footage. And um, Billy and Isaac, who had joined us on, on this particular episode as camera and sound, yeah, had decided they'd left some equipment back in the car. And bearing in mind, the, the car was were parked about a mile away, um, on the outskirts of the forest. And poor Alex said, I'll go and get the equipment. So I said to him, well, what you need to do is go past the witch's hut, out onto the footpath, turn right, get to the end of the path, do a right and immediate left. It's almost virtually cross straight over. And then just walk straight up and you're going to be back at the car. So he goes off. We watch the, um, the beam of his torchlight flashing throughout the woodland. And then it disappears. This was hilarious. And I turned around to everybody and said, this will be hilarious if he comes back from the other side of the UFO and he's gone round in a complete circle. No word of a lie. About eight minutes later, we see this torchlight from the opposite side of the UFO coming towards us. Poor Alex. He's, he's gone round <laughs> in a complete circle, yeah. come back to where he started. And in the end, Ellen said, well, I've got to go back and get some bits from the car as well, so I'll go back. And it was at that moment that when they went off to the cars to get the stuff, yeah. as soon as they'd gone, that was when we started seeing things. So yeah. they were quite gutted that they weren't there when it all started to happen. Because yeah. there was actually um, the, um, the, big, the big ginger gnome. Um, I can't remember, a big beard. <coughs> Uh, Mick. Yeah, because Mick missed it as well. And when we told him, he's like, are you taking the Mick? And we went, no. Oh, are you taking the Mick, Mick? Oh, are you taking the piss? And he's like, we, we were like, no, seriously, dude. But the triangles were still there, weren't they? Because everybody yeah. saw the triangles. They just didn't yeah. see the, the, the UFOs going over. Like, like Because it, was, it wasn't just myself and Wayne that saw it. It was myself, Wayne, there was the producer, her and a half, one of the cameramen. Um, there was somebody else as well, wasn't there? Saw it as well. Well, you, well, you, well, there was eight of us there, and only three of us, three of them had gone back to the cars, hadn't they? So there was five three, of us yeah. that had seen them. There was me, you. I don't know. Mick was with us, wasn't he? Five, when five the others went back. Was. There was me, no. you, Sam, no, Marcus, Billy. Was Mick no, no, still no. with us, or did he go back to the car? No, because he turned around to me and said, "You're joking." And we, and so there was no. six of us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it. it um yeah it was it was, quite... a, it was brilliant wasn't it you got to admit <clears throat> filming in Rendlesham Forest and and that's on my bucket list of places to go 
and then what bloody happens when we stop when we've got a break in the filming and we just look and search in the sky, three UFOs go over. Yeah. What are they um, Yeah, regards to Andy's comment about the... Uh, TR3B? The, the military. No, it wasn't. Definitely wasn't that. It never moved, never made no sound. There was no flashing lights. Um, you know, it's, um, yeah. <laughs> it's... The thing was with those triangles, wasn't it? We've been searching the sky for what? About a good 10, 15 minutes, wasn't it? With all the lights that were going on. And they weren't there. And then literally all of a sudden, those triangles are bang, bang, there. there was, yeah. It didn't turn up. It, Bang, just there. They weren't there beforehand. Uh, we'd been watching the skies sort of quite for quite some time. Yeah. So for it to, um, you know, we, we were staring up at the skies for quite some time. That's right, yeah. And yeah. neither of us, no, none of us noticed it. And it wasn't until after we'd seen those four objects in total that then other two that were stationary were there with no stars inside them. Um, and to be honest, if they were, <coughs> if it was that. Someone's been turfed off her bed. If it was, if it was that aircraft, then it was very close to us because <laughs> them lights were pretty big. Yeah, they were, weren't they? They were huge. <coughs> And even then, I don't think I can't even remember what the name of it was. I think Andy put the TR three B, TR three B, the one that they've all denied knowledge of having. It's supposed yeah. to be a big craft, but that thing that that triangle that was above us, both of them, they weren't at normal plane height. They were way up. So yeah. whatever these two triangles were, they 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 were fucking huge. I mean, because obviously the the. The so-called black triangle has been has been circulating around for a long time. Yeah, exactly, and that's what they think is the TR three. Um, but the problem is with that the the so-called T three B has a central uh, something in the middle of it as well, hmm. whereas this wasn't. It was just literally a, a light on each corner, and that was it. There was nothing else. I mean, it was far too high up and far too big to be a TR3B or any, anything we've got. In this, we're talking massive. Yeah. Well, remember the lights that went over? You had the lights that went over, uh, UAPs, UFOs. Then you had the passenger jets that went over and the military cargo ship uh, jet that went over. And you saw how big those lights were. Now, you compare that a passenger, an airliner, the, the lights that we saw against that triangle... And it was it was literally tiny. It was it would have been the triangle we saw was bigger than that, way bigger than that, way bigger. Yeah, way, and that's way. bigger than a passenger liner. Yeah, literally uh, the dots on that picture he's holding up. One of those dots would be the passenger jet, and the square, the the, the rectangle that that picture's on, would be the size of the triangle. Yeah. And for those of you who didn't see it, I'll show it again. Oh. We've got new people in there now, so let's put this back up again. Uh, right. That was one of the triangles. This is a, a real photo that I, I took of one of the triangles that was above myself and Wayne. Now, one of the dots on that triangle would be the passenger jet. And that's literally a, a, the, a, the size comparison. One of the passenger jets that went over would have been the same size as one of those dots. So you compare that to the size of that triangle and that shows you just how big these things were. And they, they weren't close. They were way up, weren't they? Yep. <laughs> so it was... Uh, very... I've just seen... I've just seen a faked... A fake news photo of a UFO-like object spotted on board a US aircraft carrier, and he just screams fakery. <laughs> oh, that's, the trouble is, I don't know why people do that because you get like people like ourselves, and you get unprofessionals and stuff like that looking at them, going, "That's fake, mate." 
And then you get them all going, no, no, it's real, it's real, it's real. Oh, where, where is it? There's, there's the photo as well. I mean, I, mean, I called someone out on this. It's hilarious. Yeah. There it is. Right. I called someone out on this, and they couldn't. They couldn't give me an answer. If you look, yeah, right. Look at the the so called the, the the aircraft, and then look at that camper. So why is the shadows on the other side? Shadows go different directions. Yeah. The camper van, the shadows going to the left, and the, on yeah. the on the other one on the aircraft. It's either going straight down or to the right. And then look at the shadow of the lorry with, with the, uh, <laughs> with the uh, crane on it. So I'm like, you do realise that picture's fake, don't you? And they went, no, 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 it's not. It's 100% authentic. And I'm like, so why is the sun's shadow going in different directions? And he's like, oh. Um, we're in the Star Wars universe, and it was Tantooine, which has... <laughs> I don't know. So, Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, most of the most of the TR three B, um, I don't know if you call them schematics, but a lot of the ideas behind the TR three B have got a central light on them, it's like the, as uh, well as one on each corner, like the stealth bomber, the stealth bomber, yes, stealth bomber basically. Exactly so. Um, so. There was no lights in the centre of it, though. It was just literally the three in the corner. So unless, when in hover mode, they have to, um, they, they turn that middle light off. Yeah, but the thing is, as I say, the size of that thing, Christ, what yeah. is it? 50 to 100 normal jets, normal passengers. Well, the problem, the problem is, though, because it was dark, we didn't know how close it was. No, you couldn't see. But all I all I can say is, when you compared it to the lights of the jets going over, <clears throat> it it winked those things out. Yeah, so definitely. Yeah. It was and big, there, and there was two of them. There was literally one, one here and one here, mir mirroring each other. But they didn't move. They just sat there, didn't they? And I, to be honest, the stars. You know, when we turning, they, they didn't turn with the stars. They just stayed there. And we were there for quite some time. And even when we moved, even when we moved on to where the meeting place was, I was still looking up every time we got into a clearing, and they'd gone. They weren't there. Yeah. It was so, almost, wasn't it that night? We said it was almost as if we were doing the filming in Rendlesham. We got to the the UFO bit because you can see one thing we 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 said and we pointed out to the producer and everything was. You've got the monument there and you've got the clearing, but you don't actually realise just how big the clearing would have been back in 1982. 1980. 1980. Oh, yeah. uh, Boxing Day, wasn't it? Yes. Three o'clock in the morning, Boxing Day. And it's when you look, because you could see back with the trees that would have been there in 1980, wasn't it? And when you looked and saw yeah. the size of the what the clearing would have actually been, it was bloody huge. But as you say, these things, they there was no noise. You, we didn't see them turn up. All of a sudden, these these black triangles are just watching us, and then they just. But we didn't see them leave. We didn't hear them leave. Nothing. It was definitely uh, definitely a strange sight. Um. And it was weird as well, but it wasn't until afterwards I noticed we never actually went to point five on the map. We walked straight past it. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> I mean, we which we, was we, something we were going to do today. However, the, the weather was bloody awful. Well, sad. what with what with the weather and the gobshites panic buying fuel, <clears throat> you know, it uh, didn't help. But yeah, you um, excuse me munching. I was supposed to have had my dinner over an hour ago, and it only arrived just <laughs> goes on quietly trying to eat bits. Um, yeah, so gonna do it again. We are gonna go down again, but I think we're going yeah. to wait till the weather's decent. Um, yeah, well, I'm I'm thinking I might be popping up because Ethan and Chloe were quite gutted because we were originally going to go up today, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I said to Ethan and Chloe that you know because I promised you if the weather's okay, we'll go up there. Yeah. Um, but. 
as soon as we got up this morning, it was chucking it down with rain. And I'm like, nah, I'm not walking around the forest in this. <laughs> so it was, sorry, kids, pyjama day today. <laughs> well, I mean, you saw how many miles we bloody walked that night. I think it was about five or six miles in total. Just a bit. Um, I know when we got back to the cars, our legs are like, no! That was it. I must have, what made me laugh was the old uh, MOD police checking us out. <laughs> yeah, they came up to because you got uh, to, to those of you don't know, you've got Eastgate, which is sort of back along, and then you got the main, you got the the hangars near Eastgate, and then you got the runways, um, and then you got the, like a, a, a main field um, with a security fence all the way around it. And we've we just, don't we, we just finished filming at Eastgate, and we've come along, we've yeah. gone through the car park. And we've gone on to the main road, and this uh, MOD Land Rover comes right down to the gate with the lights on, and they're like, <laughs> "That was the end of the runway, which was yeah. originally where um, the USAF airmen had seen the lights." That's right, and that's Eastgate, and that was literally just down from the East Gate. The East Gate yeah. was where they had to come out to go down towards the forest, um, and we had. We have actually where the I'm going to set this out there because I think this this is hilarious. We looked at the situation and we looked at the excuses of what was given to what they could have seen. And yeah. from where the airmen had seen the lights to the Orford Ness Lighthouse uh. was about seven miles from that point. And we looked, and although they do coppicing, they do rotation of the trees there. So they cut one lot of trees down, and then they plant another load in its in the empty bit. There was no way the lighthouse could have been seen from that point because there were so many trees there, you couldn't see nothing. Even though on the other side of Rendlesham Forest, there's farmers' fields. Who's that? Eat. Hello, Ellen. I can see it. I can see Mrs. Mrs. Wayne there. Oh, Jesus. Hello there, Mrs. Wayne. And who's that in the background? Behind there. Just duck down and hit up the way very quickly. Who was that? Who's oh, second. Hello. Hello there. How the very devil are you? <laughs> <coughs> she didn't hear that. How the devil are you? <laughs> She's uh, suffering with a little bit of bronchitis. Bronchitis, bronchitis, or... bronchitis, big breast. Yes, and I'm only sixteen. <laughs> she been out in the field too long. She has. You been out in the field too long. I tell you, you don't want to be picking those pockets. Not at this time of night. I no, reckon. I reckon right. she's got it from last weekend. To be honest, mm -hmm. wouldn't surprise me. Because it's been building up all week. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yes. Anything else we, we um, find out about Rendlesham, we will let all you guys know. Um, very, very good. Brilliant time. Absolutely brilliant time. But what we're going to talk about tonight is, well, loosely, just loosely talk about, because we want you guys in the chat room to join in. Um, what do you think of uh, animals in the paranormal? You know, like people bring their dogs along to investigations or or ghost, ghost animals. Like I've got a ghost cat here. Or... Um, or sightings of alleged cryptids and stuff. What do you think? I've, got, you I've got a ghost cat. It's called Phantom. You've got a ghost pussy called Phantom. <laughs> yeah. And we've got, uh, what was it, Ellen? Mm -hmm. We've got ghost, isn't it? Or oh, rabbit. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got, hang on. <sighs> and a banshee as well, by the sound of things. And where's where's Ghost? Where's Ghost? Oh, this is Ghost. Yeah, screaming Banshee's off. Yeah, this is the Ghost. Oh, hey. Yeah. Screaming like that. I see. Sir is uh, voicing his opinion. Yes. As soon as Ellen Ellen went down to my parents' house to um um went down to the house to pick some stuff up and bring back. And Freddie. That's my mate Martin. My mate Martin. Hello, Martin. You're all right, Demi Anton. You're alive. Please don't swear. Shit, bug bugger. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, bugger off. I've made a fuss of you. Bugger off. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I mean, she went, she went down to, to pick up some stuff from my mum's and uh, Freddie kicked off. And then as soon as she comes back and says hello to him, he kicks off again. So, dear, dear. so yeah, how many you lot out there? <laughs> animals? Um, I think Joe said something about... Um, Joe just said, why are you talking about... Oh, no, about Andy. Norfolk. Not Norfolk. Okay. I don't know. Well, you didn't realise I was talking Norfolk. I thought I was talking <laughs> Somerset. But never mind, I tell you, fucking Norfolk, Somerset, same thing. Just a few hundred miles difference, that's all. Oh, oh from the same area. If you're going to do Norfolk, you've got to go bootiful. Yeah, bootiful. Bernard Matthews is bootiful. Talking Norfolk. Oh, dear. Turkey. So, so, yes, go 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 what do you make of it? Because you know quite a bit about uh, that um, Chappie's RAF dog, the mascot, that people don't like saying the name. Yes, they don't like saying the name because it's rather rude. Um, but it was also a... It was also a... I'll say it, I'll say it, because I don't give a monkey. This isn't meant to offend anybody. It's not meant to upset Well, anybody. no, because, I mean, I'm, I'm of the same... I'm of the same thinking, to be honest, because it is historical fact... Um, and the way people are looking at it is they're trying to change history by denying you the knowledge, and I don't think that's fair. And and yes, Guy Gibson's dog was called Nigger. Yeah, because he was a black Labrador. Literally it's historical dog. fact. It's not meant to offend anybody, um, but that was the dog's name. Yeah. Um, however, um, he mysteriously died the same night that um, Guy Gibson um, and the rest of his team, the rest of the squadron went off on Operation Chastise um, to destroy the dams over the uh, Ruhr Valleys, I think it was, in Germany. And I think it was about midnight, just as they were all going off to complete the mission. Um, poor old dog was run over and killed. Um, he was then buried at the grounds of Scampton yeah. that night. Uh, a memorial stone was put down eventually. Um, but his dog has been seen. Guy Gibson's dog has been seen about the base. Um, specifically, oh, on the, specifically, <laughs> specifically on the runway where... Um, Gibson's plane would come in yeah. where he would then run out to it and, and meet his owner. <coughs> um, and I, I personally have, have, have been to Scampton. I did my gliding lessons there um, with the squadron leader of the Red Arrows at the time when they were on furlough. Um, and you go, you know about the history of the place. You know that the dog's buried there and the stories circulate around the unit and everybody says, oh yeah, we've, we've seen the dog. He sits by the side of the runway waiting for the boss to come home. Um, and he had a, another name for him, which from what I've heard, Stephen Fry is writing the new version of the Dan Busters. Okay. And, on a bit of research, and I knew about this, but I've only just discovered that they were actually going are going to be making a remake of it. That he had another name for the dog, and it was called Nigsy. Oh. And they were thinking of maybe using that as his name instead of the original name, um, because then it's still historical fact. But I was just about to say the not, thing that really, really pisses me off. <clears throat> is it was a piece of history it yes it was a der it's a derogative name but at the end of the day that dog didn't know it that was his name that's all he knew um and then people come along and the, the tombstones change and, they, and i'm sorry but that's no that's wrong and people they and they did that right? they did that in uh, july july last year yeah, they bollocks. removed sorry, but... they removed the memorial stone with his name on and replaced it with one without his name on well, then they should put one there, well, on there with Nigsy on, because that's not the word. That's not what he was called. That was his other nickname. 
that was his other nickname. But they they still they still don't care. But even when you look at news articles, they sort of are reluctant to actually mention his actual name. And the the Daily Mail, they made me the well the Daily Fail. They made me laugh actually because uh, back on the second of November in two thousand eleven. It's, it freaked some people out um, because it was a memorial for World War II heroes okay. and they had a choir there and they obviously wanted to take a big picture of all of the choir sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Nigsy pops up right in the middle of them in the photo. No one knows how the dog got there, but it's there in the photo. Um Fucking, let's get rid of that. Right there we go. Oh my god, yeah. All of the choir had stated, clearly stated, and witness testified and said there was no dog there when that when photo was taken? taken. Um, this was well, the photo was taken in 2011, I don't know. Yeah. 2011. And Nigger died in, was it 44? 43. 43. Guy Gibson died in 44. Ah. Hello. You going to bed now? Yeah. It's Donkey! Donkey! You're looking for a Shrek! It's Stitch! It's Stitch! I stand. Oh, I'm stand corrected. Stitch, go <laughs> bad! I'm so. No night, Stitch. That sounds weird. My late cat was called Stitch. Do you know? Hello. Oh yeah, mate. You're all right. Yes, me. <laughs> um, no. But yeah, what what's made me laugh is that all the way through the story that the male have put in there, they've stated on there that the choir choir are adamant that there was no dog there at the time. Um. But when the photos were developed, there was the dog. Um, I'm but the sorry, Daily but that Mail is, have made him. Laugh. You can see it's him. Yeah. But the Daily Mail have made me laugh because they've, they've put through this story and they've gone from most of the article without actually mentioning his name. Then almost at the bottom, it says, Gibson's Labrador nigger was the mascot of the squadron that launched an audacious nighttime raid on three heavily defended dams deep in Germany's industrial heartland using bouncing bombs. That's right. The picture directly underneath it, which is Nigger going out to meet Guy Gibson as he comes off his plane. Bless him. Okay. Now, underneath, it states, Celebrated feats, actor Richard Todd as wing commander Guy Gibson with the dog who played N star, 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 star in the 1955 film Dan Busters. Why... Why put the stars in there when they've already mentioned its name? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not the dog's fault. He was called that. That's still his <coughs> name. Or you could you could have put what was his nickname? Uh, Nigsy. Nigsy. Right. They could have put that up. And it's like um, you're saying about Stephen Fry and, and Joe and everybody yeah. saying, "Oh, we love Stephen Fry. I like Stephen Fry." But the thing is, he doesn't give a shit, and he doesn't care if anybody gets offended. So he'll just say it anyway. Well, I mean, they according to the article that I read, he did say that they that they were going to try and find a way around it because of the PC brigade getting involved. And I'm like, so, but the problem there is, what do you do? Do you turn around and say that the Egyptians didn't use slaves to build the pyramids? It's the PC brigade. I'm you sorry, can't. it's got ridiculous, absolutely yep. ridiculous. You know, just it, it has all these, like, you know, back along it used to be you're a boy, you're a girl, you're gay, you're bi, you're straight, you, you're you're born a girl, but you're a bloke inside, you're born a bloke, you're a girl inside, and you have the operation to get it changed. Nowadays, I'm going to, ident got, I'm going to identify I'm, as a toaster. Yeah, exactly. I'm a toaster. I'm a baked bean. I'm not a boy. I'm not a girl. Where do I pee? On the fucking toilet along with everybody else. Bugger off. You know? Yeah. I've got no time for any of this PC bullshit, you know? Sorry. Yeah, but I mean, the, the thing is, is when, you know, I'm okay, it's 2000 in, well, 2011, <coughs> when it was, uh, oh, that was when it was updated, was yeah. in 2011. 
but at the end of the day, it's historical fact. And you can't erase historical fact. Yeah. You know, it's like it's like for years they've been trying to say the Holocaust never happened. Or they won't Might teach the happen. Holocaust. They won't teach the Holocaust in certain schools. And that's but the wrong. fact is, you can't deny it. All right, explain to me this. Like, seeing as we're going to do a bit of controversy, why is it we have to learn all this other alternative history stuff? Which, don't get me wrong, I agree. Like, learning about slavery, emancipation, all that stuff. Totally agree. And it needs to be kept alive and needs, people need to remember. So, if we can do all that and we're doing it because of that, then why the hell are we not remembering the Holocaust? Because, sorry, you know, uh, that was a, a rather a bad thing and needs to be kept alive so that the same mistakes are never made again. Yeah, I mean, it was it was like when they, um, what was it, with this business with the BLM, you know, and they ripped that um, the statue down in Bristol of that slave trader. That's right. I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, but hang on, the reason why a statue like that is not necessarily to celebrate the person's life. It's no, a reminder of what evil men can do. Yeah. And that's why places like Auschwitz still stands. It's a reminder no. of the evil that people that. do. Yeah. We you know. know. For those of you in the chat room who don't know, we did an investigation where somebody had very mistakenly done a, uh, a display of Auschwitz um, with graphic pictures of what happened there. And they had done in wood a, a, a copy of the gates of Auschwitz with the work Schofret set you free which is written in German above the gates in Auschwitz. And um, it was mixed in among with a load of other artifacts from the First and Second World War. Actually, no, this was the Second World War room, wasn't it? Um, and yep. it, had, it had upset uh, two spirits at least, hadn't it? And yeah. we, had, we had to sort it all out. And we found, took a lot, lot of detective work, and we found eventually found it, found the, the wooden thing, and we found out that it was that that had upset it. And we told them all to get rid of it, didn't we? Well, it took about half an hour. I think it was about half an hour in all. It took took about best part of half an hour to find the object that the spirits were talking about. And yeah. as soon as we actually mentioned that they actually saw them and, and actually looked at them and gone, this must be it, everything seemed to calm down a little bit. It yeah. was like they were trying to make us aware. And as soon as we were aware of those objects and we said that we would do something about it or try to, right, and we did. it calmed down. But whether they've moved them objects, I don't know. But they certainly weren't happy about them objects being there. No, they weren't. And everybody we spoke to were shocked, weren't they? And they said, we will try and get them moved. Yeah. But they did say that the bloke who put it there was a bit of a... <laughs> coffee shaker. Bit of a coffee shaker. So he's shaking his coffee beans, was he? He was in this cafe. Coffee. God bless, he was God the bless, Nescafe yes. gold man. <laughs> yes, he was one of those, yes. We love them coffee beans. We do like those coffee beans. Uh. <laughs> at, at least once a day with the coffee. That warrior! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Anyway. laughs> so, yeah, um, we've been to, we were to, we've uh, done loosely about uh, animals in the paranormal site and uh, you, you've spoken about uh, Guy Gibson's dog nigger and I was, I was thinking about uh, Jeff the mongoose <laughs> do, you not, do you not know? Was he psychic? No, Jeff the uh, I don't know, psychic like mongoose Here he is It was actually a house that was haunted by Allegedly, this squirrel cross weasel thing, and when it was it was found, it hid in the walls, and you could hear this thing talk. Allegedly, hear this thing talking through the walls, and it said its name was Jeff, but it was spelt G E F, so Geth, but it said it was Jeff, and it it, it would say things like, um, it came out with weird things like, "I'll split the atom. I'm the, I am the fifth dimension. I am the eighth wonder of the world." And he was investigated by, um, oh, what was his bloody name? Hang on, let me find it. Uh, and of course, it's all there without the guy's name. 
This was in 1933. All right, who's that standing at the bottom of some stairs? Let's have a look. Nope, that's not him. I can't find his name now. I had it all up here. It's all gone. Uh, Jeff the Talking Mongoose. No, no, no. They've even got, they took plaster casts of paw prints that were found, and they said it it was a, a polecat. But uh, I'm just to get all the photos from it now. Jeff the Talking Mongoose. Get off the photos and show me the name of the guy who investigated it. Uh, no, no. I must admit, I do find it amusing when you Google ghost animals and you get some strange pictures come up. Oh, you do. Well, just type in G-E-F, the talking mongoose. Hang on. Because all it's doing is showing me photos. It's not actually uh, <laughs> anything else, which doesn't bloody well help. Uh, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Look at the screen. Hey? Look at the screen. What the fuck? <laughs> like, like I said, some of the things you find on Google when you put in ghost animals. Oh my god! That's um, that's the haunt. That's the haunted farmyard. That is <laughs> the haunted farmyard. I'm sure they brought a film like that out in the late eighties. The thing is, is when you put it when you put in things like ghost animals, it comes up with things like a ghost crab. Actual animals that have got the name ghost in them or they've been named such like the ghost bat because it's pure white. Right. Yeah. Again, ghost crab, ghost shark, ghost frog. I don't know why they call yeah, that a ghost frog. It's not even it's not even white. Ghost moth. Well, I've found the story. I found the actual story. Um, 1931, the Irvings, who lived in a remote farmhouse called the Cashin's Gap on the Isle of Man believe they were haunted by a talking mongoose. Um, the theories that were thrown around <coughs> <by> yeah, <coughs> he was a figment of the Irving's imagination. <coughs> Excuse me, a mongoose that had been possessed by a poltergeist, which quite frankly I've never heard of poltergeist possessing anybody, or a real talking animal. Um, several ghost hunters and journalists visited the Irving's home in an attempt to uncover the mystery. One reporter even said that the creature had given them tips for the races. Um, repeatedly he threatened the family and he was sw swore at them and threw objects at them. Amazing for a, a mongoose being able to do that. Um, uh, initially the Irvings, Jim, Margaret and their 13-year-old daughter Voiry V-O-I-R-R-E-Y -R -R -E thought the sounds coming from behind the walls were rats. Jim laid down traps uh, and poisons but the noises continued. Uh, one day he tried to scare the creature by growling at the wall like a dog, and to his surprise, it growled right back at him. Do you think he may have had a couple of them before he did that? Um, soon it was singing nursery rhymes in an eerie childlike manner before coming out and introducing itself a few days later. Uh, Vwari described the creature as being the size of a small rat with yellow fur and a large bushy tail. Um, the animal said it was a mongoose called Jeff, but spelt Geff, who'd been born in New Delhi, India, and was then hunted before escaping to the Isle of Man, all the way from India to the Isle of Man. What a strange place to settle. Um, he told them he was an earthbound spirit and a ghost in the form of a mongoose. Um, but more chillingly, he warned that he was extra, extra clever, but not always kind. Um, initially, he, resumed, he assumed the role of a pet and also took on household jobs. Uh, Gef, they said that Geth uh, guarded their house and he let them know guests were arriving. Um, told people that if one of them left the fire on before going downstairs to put it out. Um, unfortunately, his warnings about being cruel were right. He'd often lose his temper with the Irvings and call Jim a fat headed gnome and even threaten to kill him. <laughs> uh, one night, the family tried to barricade the bedroom door with chairs and boxes so he couldn't get in. And then uh, Jeff made the door bulge until it crashed open. Um, for me, it sounds like they had a visitor from a different a parallel dimension or something. Um, 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 there are pictures of... Hang on, I'll see if I can... So that or a different pub. <laughs> Let me see if I can show you. These are the, they're the footprints that were taken at the time. See it? It's a very strong mongoose. 
fucking strong mongoose. Yeah, but to make the door bulge. I think they mean like I don't think them because it was would have been a wooden door, so it must be like it is in the you know in the cinema where you see them go like rubber. It must be like that. That's the only thing I can think of. A um, rubber door. Skeptics said that the footprints belonging to Jeff were actually created by the family sheepdog. Mm, I'm not sure about that because I, I I did a on. One of the uh, Dark Mirror shows about three years ago, we did a whole show on it, and everything that we found was it pointed more towards visitors from somewhere else, you know. Well, I don't know. I mean, hearing hearing that, it just I don't know. Certain aspects of that don't make any sense. Can you just carry on talking one second? Carry on talking. Mm, okay. Good film that was. Um, <laughs> hmm, what do I talk about? I will go back to Guy Gibson and that. Um, yeah, when I when I was in the Royal Air Force, I did um, glider uh, lessons, and there was quite a few of us that had said, you know, we'd we'd like to camp out here and, and watch out, see if uh, the dog comes back. Um, but apparently, a lot of people around the unit had seen. Uh, nigger walking about the place up and down the runway around yeah. by the memorial stone where he's buried so it's um yeah and we never got the opportunity to sort of sit around there in the middle of the night to see whether he, he popped up but what what do you make of, of like ghost animals because like, as i say we we've got um i've got patch unfortunately not our old staffy buried in the back garden <clears throat> and there is a, a cat also buried in the back garden from the previous owner. Um, not just me, but um, uh, uh, Taylor, my ex, my other daughter, and various visitors we've had to the, to the house have seen. Um, I call it Shadow, the ghost cat. It's a black cat, twice the size of my black cat. That's well, been lots of times going upstairs, everything. The thing is, is at the end of the day, as we've discussed before, every living thing has energy. Mm -hmm. If we see ghosts of human beings, yeah, and we see ghosts of aircraft, yeah, why can't there be ghosts of cats, dogs, horses, mongoose, squirrels, and other living things? I think um, it doesn't matter if you're human or an animal or whatever. If you love a place that much, and if you died at that place. As we all know, the Stone Tape Theory, if, if something dramatic has happened and our life's gone, that energy comes out and can stay there. So why can't that happen with animals? Exactly. You know, at the end of the day, an animal, you know, whether it's a dog or a cat or a human being, they're all living things and they're all obviously the same sort of energy. So why can't they come back? And also I mean, obviously, got... not to the extent of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery, obviously, but you know what I mean. Well, you want Fred Gwynn coming back and bringing my cat back? I really don't. <laughs> you big bastard, put my cat back. He's off on his Norfolk accent again. <laughs> <laughs> Norfolk. <laughs> um, <laughs> very good Norfolk accent there. Very, very good. Um, <laughs> it's like. Or am I going to call? Wait for him to come right down first. Sorry. Right. Uh, animals, um, they don't have the the things that we have where we can block stuff out. So they're not going to look at something and go, oh, that's a ghost. I can't see that. And the brain block it. Ghost uh, uh, animals. Out of curiosity, how do we know that animals haven't got that ability? They have. They can, they can see and sense. No, what I mean is, is how how do we know that animals can't block it off, or animals don't suffer from the same ailments that we because do? When you're at school, when it comes to it, when you're at school as a child, you are, it's drummed into you about religion and this, that, and that, the other, and you can only see ghosts if they're holy ghosts and if they're this and if they're that, and that's why a lot of children, because when you're born, it's open uh, and everything's open, you can see stuff. That's why young kids look at things that you know aren't there and stuff. But as you get older and you're persuaded and that this is this and that's that, your brain closes off. Um, 
My granddaughter. Yeah, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, is not all animals are capable of seeing spirit. Not all animals do. Well, no, I haven't seen a chimpanzee do it. <laughs> well, I mean, some of our cats will react to Joanne popping up. I think Blossom, Blossom and Tippy react. Uh, Phantom doesn't react at all. And Shadow just goes absolutely ballistic. It's like my lot. When Shadow, the, the ghost cat, comes in, you can literally see them go and watch whatever it is and let they'll watch it and go across but they they, they don't uh, freak out they don't the, the cat yeah. don't split the dog doesn't leg it it's literally like oh all right and then they carry on as normal but so i definitely have you ever asked a champ chimpanzee um <laughs> heard the song, forever blowing bubbles what was michael jackson's chimpanzee called bubbles oh well that was a bit of a tedious link wasn't it it was oh yeah it was a little bit of a tedious how link, weird it? is that that was what we were going to talk about at some yeah. point and joe as uh, well you yourself and joe have put us into that link really really well great mind sink alike there you go <laughs> what do you guys think do you think michael jackson genuinely died or do you think his death was faked? Purely because so many things don't make sense. And I know a, a little video came to light that I sent to Wayne, I sent to Joe, and I sent to a couple of others of uh, a gentleman who was <clears throat> interviewed at the same time as Michael Jackson's funeral cortege left. So Michael Jackson was allegedly dead. I've seen the uh, pictures of his open state coffin um, and it literally looked like a wax doll was in the coffin. Now, yeah. bear in mind, Michael Jackson got burnt in, it was 1982, 83, he got Somewhere burnt. Like, yeah. He was doing an advert for Pepsi and something caught in the gel in his hair and it went up and he burnt his head and his face. Now, the thing, that, thing is that everybody forgot about was that he got burnt and it was life-altering scars. Yet, all of a sudden, a couple of years later, no scars, nothing. He's absolutely fine. This guy who was interviewed the day of Michael Jackson's funeral, and he was in the, in the um, uh, uh, NBC recording studio or whatever it was, being recorded was a guy who had been burnt, who had the same eyes as Michael Jackson and the same voice as Michael Jackson. And he called yeah. himself Dave Dave. And he said he got burnt in 1984. And Michael Jackson befriended him in hospital and took him in as one of his best friends. <coughs> right. With that story, with that story, he was six years old and living with his mother, Marie Rothenberg, in the Carroll Gardens neighborhood of Brooklyn, New York, when his father, Charles Rothenberg, kidnapped him to California the parents were divorced and in conflict over custody of David, after, David the two yeah, argued, David after the two argued on the telephone on the evening of March the 3rd, 1983, at a motel in Buena Park. Charles gave his son a sleeping pill and after he fell asleep, poured kerosene on the bed and set fire to it. He then left the room and watched the te from a telephone booth across the street while other, other guests rescued David. And he was treated with third-degree burns over 90% of his body. He required finger and toe amputations and received a total of more than 100 skin grafts. He was badly disfigured and during one grafting operation experienced brain swelling that led to seizures and other complications. But, as Mark says, when you look at him now, he's down as, when you when you type Dave Dave in. He calls himself Dave Dave, doesn't he? He calls himself Dave Dave, but he's an artist. And yes, the similarities between the voice and the eyes are really, really freaky. They're fucking identical. Um, and it it's weird. Um, oh, hello, something up, come on up here. He's dead. Dave Dave is dead. When did Dave Dave die, die? 
Dave, Dave, I died three, three years ago, ago. <laughs> that was a bit of a tongue twister. It um, was, wasn't it? Police are investigating the mysterious death of burn survivor and friend of Michael Jackson, Dave Dave, 42, whose father set him on fire when he was six, suffering 90% of his body. Dave Nate, Dave, 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 real name David Rothenberg, died in Las Vegas on July the 15th, age 42. He was transported from an apartment complex near McCarran International Airport to Sunrise Hospital and Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. Coroner has not ruled out cause of death yet. Friends tell the dailyfail.com that they fear he may have accidentally taken too many meds. He made no secret of the fact that he used heavy pain duty me uh, heavy duty pain meds to make his life manageable. Others believe his death could be related to heat exhaustion because it was so hot on the day he died. He'd have been used to that. Um, Dave made global headlines in 1983 when he suffered burns on 90% of his body. So, Dave Dave is dead, dead. Dead, dead, Jim, Jim. Um, Joe, we're not saying Michael Jackson's alive. We're not saying uh, Prince is alive. We're not saying Michael Jackson is dead either. We're not saying Prince is dead either. Same with Elvis. I'm not saying he's dead, but I'm saying he's alive. We're just saying that they're very strange circumstances and the, the video that's yeah. come out of... Um, very there was an, there was another thing as well. There was a strange guest at the tribute show that they did for Michael Jackson. Um, yeah. That's right. If I can try and find it. Uh, the thing is, Michael Jackson was known Jackson. for disguising himself all the time. And we're not just talking sunglasses and a wig, etc., etc. He'd go into prosthetics, latex, proper cinematic stuff, so you would never recognise him. <laughs> uh, All Star Concert celebrates Michael Jackson's 30th birthday anniversary celebration at Madison Square. All information of it's been removed, but there was there was a, a guy Strange, at the that. concert that everybody pointed out, and he was at the funeral as well, oddly enough. Um, and they pointed him out, and he wanted that everybody had said the same thing. It looked like he was wearing heavy prosthetics. That it was a face mask that he was using. Yeah. Yeah. And they wanted to know why would someone go to this extreme measure to disguise their face? And everybody then started pointing at the finger. And the speculation mainly was because Michael Jackson was under a lot of pressure. Um, he was forced into doing the concerts at the O2 Arena despite his him not wanting to do them. <clears throat> and maybe this was his way of getting out of it. Maybe he looked at it that it was the same sort of get out clause that Elvis Presley had. When Elvis Presley died, he ended up selling more songs and more albums than he did when he was alive, which boosts the estate up something chronic. Now, what better way to look after your kids than to fake your own death and all of a sudden your record sales go through the roof, all your debts are cleared and your kids are sorted for life. And we've seen the video of the um, the ambulance that took his body away and it got to the hospital and he, he came out the back of the ambulance and straight into a side room. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, it's, it's like Joe, Joe's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We're, we're not saying they're alive, we're not saying they're dead. We're literally just saying that the things that have come to light recently, very strange, very thought-provoking, thought and it is literally things that make you go, hmm. But it's only certain ones. It's not It's not every single celebrity death, etc., etc., etc. It's It's the odd one, like Prince. No cameras, no paparazzi, no press. Nobody knows anything about the funeral. All enclosed, nobody saw the body. No, nothing else, and all of a sudden, he's dead. He's buried. All his money's been left to an estranged sister nobody's ever heard of, who uh, you know left the family fold thirty odd years ago. Just a bit odd. That's all I say. Well, they do. I mean, I mean, I think it's what. I mean, he's eleven, is it? Maybe more, maybe less. Uh, Twelve years. Said, I think. What do you year. believe? I think I it's think possible. It's but 
Who knows? Keep a, the thing is with us, uh, especially with the show and everything, just keep an open mind about everything. You know, it, it could be, it may not be, but there's a lot of strong evidence saying that it is. You know. Yeah, I mean, it. There are so many conspiracy theories out there about whether he's still alive or not. Mm. Um, um, you know, there's, there's a clip on YouTube that's been watched by more than three million times. Um, and everybody thinks it's Michael Jackson. But this guy that does the, the dance moves is so good, everybody thinks it is Michael Jackson himself. Um, Kanye West recently said Michael Jackson tore down the walls and the doors of culture in a new interview of Farrell Williams for ID magazine um, and said that uh, we should have something that says we can't allow any company to tear down our heroes not on the shade room not on social media and especially not in documentaries yeah but uh, Kanye West has the brain capacity of a piece of broccoli <laughs> um Okay. I'm just seeing something here. My, Michael Jackson makes a surprise appearance in the trailer for Daughter Paris Jackson's new show. Fans were thrilled when Michael made a surprise appearance in the trailer for Daughter Paris Jackson's new Facebook Watch reality show, Unfiltered Paris Jackson and Gabriel Glenn. The short teaser shows Michael Jackson interacting with a much younger Paris personally in an unseen home videos. Michael eerily asks Paris what she wants to be when she grows up, and she replies, I do what you do. She said, dance and sing. The show debuts on June the 30th and Foley <coughs> That's nothing to do with anything. So that article is just a load of crap, really. But <laughs> Yeah, it is. I reckon I have to look at something else. Oh, oh, five five conspiracy that. theories that Michael Jackson's still alive. And I think they're watching us because my iPad's starting to play up. <laughs> the powers that be are watching me, but I don't give a damn. No, I think Bubbles is dead now. So he's not forever blown Bubbles? Not now. <laughs> right. Uh... I'm okay. Jackson conspiracy theorists known as believers have long claimed that the singer is still alive, having faked his own death. Yeah. In early 2017, investment banker David Nutt Dunn took the stand on the U.S. tax court in Los Angeles and said Jackson was on the edge of going bankrupt before his death, fueling theories that the pop legend may simply have changed his identity in order to escape his financial problems. In July last year, Hollywood hairdresser Stephen Earhart, who was a close friend of Jackson's, claimed he had information about Star that not even the family knows. In a post, excuse me, a post on Facebook, Earhart wrote a tip for the believers, the Michael Jackson believers. You heard it here first, an announcement of sorts. And in a couple of months or latest at the end of the year, you will be receiving some very good news. It's almost unbelievable. And not even the family knows, but I do. <clears throat> well, were, one of his producers was uh, came forward and said he used to disguise himself all the time, um, and he disguised himself so well that when he was stood next to the producer, he, he, he had no clue didn't even him. know it was him. And it was a, he was stood next to a white geezer, you know. Well, in 2017, Paris Jackson was convinced that her father was murdered, that she'd actually said that in a statement to Rolling Stone magazine. Um, Michael Jackson's will wasn't signed by him. 2012, five of the singer's brothers and sisters, Janet, Rebby, Rando, Randy, Rando. <laughs> Got caught with a bit of Star Wars Rando there. Jackson. Rando Carlson. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, Randy, Tito and Jermaine signed a letter to the executors of Jackson's estate, John Branker and John McLean, accusing the pair of fraud, forgery, exploitation and abuse. The letter was published on gossip site Selly Buzz. Uh, 
Jackson's siblings claimed that he was not in Los Angeles on the day his will was dated, 7th of July 2002, and therefore could not have signed it. They also claimed that Jackson said he despised Branker on the claim and didn't want them to have anything to do with his life. Um, Jackson was killed for his music catalogue. Paul McCartney again, wasn't it? Yeah. That, do you know what? Talking of that, you've just said another one. There, there is another conspiracy theory. Paul that, McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> Paul McCartney actually died. The real Paul McCartney died in the 60s when the Beatles are just starting and he was replaced with a double. I can't remember the name of the double, but the double took Paul McCartney's name. and that's Yeah, I think he was doing Paul McCartney tribute, wasn't he? He was part of a Beatles tribute act. And, no, no, early 60s. When the Beatles just yeah, I know, but what I'm saying is they 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 were saying that this the guy that replaced Paul the Paul McCartney oh, was right, from, was a tribute actor of the beat of the Beatles Paul McCartney. Yeah, and when the real Paul McCartney died, they brought this guy in to replace him. So the Paul McCartney we see now isn't the real Paul McCartney. Yeah, <laughs> his name's Keith Morris. <laughs> yeah, like that. I don't fucking know. Um, really yeah, Jackson idea. has repeatedly stated that there was a conspiracy to kill her brother and that he knew he was going to die. He reportedly told her that he was going to be murdered for his music, publishing catalogue and his estate. Uh, last year, oh no, not the scum. The scum reported the existence of a note allegedly written by Jackson just weeks before his death that appears to support his theory. The note read, they're trying to murder me. Jackson continued that he was scared about his life and that the system wants to kill me for my catalogue. Jackson killed himself with drugs. Well, that was the, the main one, wasn't it? That was the main one, yeah. That was the one where that the doctor got done or something, weren't it? Yeah. Saying that uh, gave him too much of it or whatever it was. Andy, yes, you're right. Uh, the whole reason he was barefoot on the zebra crossing and the others weren't was he was supposed to be allegedly already dead. I've actually had my photo taken on that crossing. So the girls thinking about it. <laughs> the Abbey Road crossing, when you go outside the studio, it, it's got it it's got gates and everything, and there's loads of graffiti all over the wall. And then you got the, the Abbey Road crossing literally right in front of it. Next time I go to London, I'll take some more photos. I've walked across that. You have? Yeah, Blackpool, you know? Madame Two Swords. <laughs> I've got pictures of it. I can prove it. <laughs> There's, um, I think, I think a lot of celebrity deaths, yeah, they happened. Uh, but uh, the John Lennon one, yes, he, I've seen a couple, um, I shouldn't have said it, but I've seen a couple of the autopsy reports and he was definitely dead. But um, Michael Jackson is one of those there's some fucking good evidence that has come out since he's supposed to have died to say that this Dave Dave is amongst one of the personas that he used to disguise himself as. And the video that we've seen, the the voice and the eyes, him. One hundred percent him. Yeah, I mean the problem the problem there now lies is the fact that if this Dave Dave really died three years ago, he ain't gonna be able to use that disguise anymore, is he? Who's to say he did? Who's to say he, he literally, like the Highlander, he went on to a different one? Well, he would have done. He would have had to have done. He wouldn't have been able to use the same disguise. No, he had um, to get the age, didn't he? So he would have had to have picked on another one. And the, the one that I had seen of the, the funeral and the tribute concert, there was the same bloke at the same at each one. And it looked like he was wearing heavy prosthetics and makeup. The hair was disguised. You could clearly see it was disguised as well to make it look it's different. Nice um, and so he could just pop onto that one. I just realised something. Uh, just after he died, and Dave Dave was in all the papers and everything as his friend. All these reports at the same time, and it, this, I'm not looking at this, it's just something I remembered. All the reports at the same time came out saying that my, Michael Jackson had vitiligo. 
Yeah. What did Dave, Dave, the alleged burn victim, look like he had if he was uh, an African American guy? The same. Yeah. I mean, like, like I said, at the end of the day, Michael Jackson was under a lot of pressure. He had then he had he had to be he was booked in for the O2. He was, he was, he was under a hell of a lot of pressure. He had he supposedly had a lot of debts there. So the yeah. only way of yeah. getting out of those debts, and I dare say a lot of people would probably think the same thing, fake his own death, the payout on the insurance would cover it, yeah. he would then start making the money and it would go to his estate. And then his kids are sorted for the rest of their lives. Yeah. And all he's got to do is lay low. And what he can better, retire in peace. He wouldn't have no problems. What better way to do it than to appear to be one of his long-standing friends and he was a, he'd be a long-standing friend of the family and the children and he could watch his kids and keep an eye on them. But then if you've got the money, you can afford the, the, the best prosthetics or the best disguises or best plastic surgery to change the way you look. So you could go out in public without being discovered. It's just part of the conspiracy theory, isn't it? I was just reading what Joe said. Uh, he shouldn't, if if he had any debts. He he was quite a lot in the red because his Neverland Ranch and the fun fair he had on it failed, and um, because yep. of the amount of money he sank into it, it put in millions. <coughs> of That's why it was so bad being done. Yeah, and it, it wasn't just because of people fleecing him. He was he he did lead an extravagant lifestyle. He yeah. did buy things that he didn't really need. Um, you know, he'd be quite happy to go out and spend two and a half million pounds on a car that would never leave the driveway. Yeah. Um, I don't believe so, in the lesson of those children. I really genuinely don't. No. Because Geordie Chandler, now he's grown up, came forward and said, nah, did he fuck? It was my parents trying to make some money. And a lot of the kids from back then are now grown, and they've all said the same thing. He never touched them. He was a genuinely nice guy. Yes, they did get in his bed, and he'd be like, oh, hang on a minute. He, uh, he, and he was always iffy about it, but he let, you know, he'd say, you can stay for a bit and then bugger off. But they all turned around and said, no, it was just their parents trying to make money off of yeah. them. He never touched them, you know? So, and unfortunately, People are like that. People are assholes. Yep. You know, Definitely. But, but yeah, he's, his ranch, his Neverland ranch failed and the fun fair he had there, that was originally put in for the children, you know, because he used to help orphan children and special needs kids and everything. Um, and it was put there for them. But because he sank so much money into it, he wasn't getting the return and it put him millions in debt, you know. Well, um, yeah, because you, you're paying for the initial layout. And then you've got to pay constant running for it. Yeah, and if yeah, you yeah. just keep allowing people to come in and use Neverland Ranch without actually taking anything for it, you're just constantly why. paying out and not getting nothing back. I understand why he did it. I, I mean, I think the guy yeah. was a brilliant guy. I think he was a bit mixed up and people did lead him astray and people were out to get that. After his death, people were out to get that. But... Yeah. To be absolutely honest, if you're that rich and you are insured to the hilt, what better way to uh, ensure your kids are going to yeah. have a good time when all your debts are squashed? The thing is, and Joe's, Joe's got the right point there, is we don't know the truth and we'll never know the truth. No, well, no we never will. We, were, we, we will we know the truth. If Michael Jackson did fake his own death, the only way we would find out the truth is if he popped up and went... And he can't because then he'd get done and put in prison. Well, he would, but then he can afford to not worry about it, then, can't he? I think record, I think record sales. <laughs> the money, the money earned from record sales since he died has severely outweighed the money he's made up to the point he died. That is legitimate money from record sales. Yeah. So, if he gets put in jail for for killing himself supposedly, <laughs> for faking his own death, he's got the money not to have to worry about it. He could bail That's, himself out quite easily. Yeah, I think, quite frankly, as, as, I, as I said, Joe, we, we can't say, yes, we think, or no, we don't think. We're just saying, yeah. you know. But I will yeah. say, if he did, never, ever come forward, never say, hi, guys, I'm here. 
I don't think he ever will. I think it may be a case of where that Earhart bloke has turned around and said something exciting is going to happen at the end of the year. I reckon it's quite possibly that Michael Jackson's recorded stuff. Stuff will be be found. Stuff yeah, be way before he died, there will be an album or something will get released and everybody will go, ooh, new Michael Jackson material, he's still alive. But it could be just a back catalogue of stuff that he did 15, 20 years ago. Sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, Andy said uh, in the chat room, same for George Michael. Um, I'm sure I saw a report on his autopsy and he genuinely did die and it was it was a drug overdose, if I, my memory serves me right. Um, yeah, sure he overdosed on Lemzip. Yeah, was it taken in a cottage? Um, the only thing we, we, we the only thing that was the back passage. Oof, the only, <laughs> the only, um, Suchusa, the only desk we're talking about are the ones, uh, like Michael Jackson's. If Michael Jackson's one, he, you know, he died, funeral, etc., and there was none of this prosthetics, there was none of these people appearing at, at his memorial concerts, appearing at his funeral, and there were none of these people. Dave, Dave appearing on TV, we wouldn't be talking about this now. Yeah. Um, same with Prince. Uh, no pictures, no news, no nothing. And all of a sudden, he's dead, buried. His money's been left to his estranged sister that they have he, they haven't seen for 30, 40 years. And it's it's one of those yeah. where allegedly his sister is the exact double of him. Yeah, the thing is, is uh, I was always led to believe that Latoya Jackson never got on with the rest of the family, yet since Michael Jackson's death, they've all got on like really a house close. on fire. Yeah. It's all bollocks, mate. They, they, they all fell out over egos. It was over egos. Yeah. You know, and then since he's gone, you can't turn around and say, oh, I didn't like him because of the ego. Oh, I loved him so much. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, I oh miss him so much. Anyone, anyone for a cup of coffee? <laughs> cup, cup of coffee. <laughs> but it's all. Does anybody want to go? Oh my God. Chandler oh Bing. My God. <laughs> Hang on. Oh my God. Aliens. <laughs> but. but. But no, I mean, at the end of the day, if if he has if he has sort of topped himself, then fair dues to him, to be honest. But he's best keeping out of the way. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I know you you won't be, but Michael or whatever your name is now, if you're watching this, stay dead for your mm. sake and your family's sake, and just stay stay like that, isn't it? Yeah, just. Leave it all I mean, in the, the realm the of the problem is, and the reason why the conspiracy theories are there is because they've looked at Michael Jackson's situation, they've looked at his death and gone, it was the easy way out. He had too many debts. He was under a lot of pressure to perform at the O2, yeah. and he was on a strict regime for his dance routines and fitness levels and the medications he was taking and everything else. He's probably just sat there and thought, my only way out of this is yeah. death. Yeah. And so someone has probably suggested to him, well, I know what, I will give you this cocktail of drugs, it will knock you out, I'll pronounce you dead, ambulance will come and take you away, you can yeah. bugger off to some island we'll in the West Indies or in the ambulance. You can disappear off to the West Indies or something and live your life with Riley in, in your mansion there mm. until you die. I will say Legitimately. that, interviewing, going on TV... In, in the makeup and interviewing, uh, being interviewed as Dave, Dave, and going to your memorial and this, that, the other, what fucking balls has he got? You know, I, I don't know anything about Whitney Houston. I think Joe's mentioned Whitney Houston, but I know um, Tina Turner was like that, wasn't she? You had Tina oh, Turner. I was an arsehole to her. Yeah. Nasty piece of work. The Jackson's father was a nasty piece of work. Yep. And now you've got Britney Spears' dad as well. He's, he's just been, been done. Knob. Just been done. Yeah. Um, Prince Philip. No, nah, Prince Philip's gone. Prince Philip's gone. Um, he ain't alive, Christ. No, he, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's got, I know a couple of people who were on guard at the funeral. He's gone. 
<laughs> the Illuminati. I see a lot of people try and say uh, this isn't directed at you, Andy, mate. So don't worry. A lot of people say that the Illuminati were involved no. in this, involved in that, were involved. In... I think if you are that high, that high up in, on the uh, fame fame wagon, and you've got that much money, but you've also got that much debt, and that is your option, you are going to have all those. Things at your disposal to enable you to do all that. Boy, Boy! you're gonna have all those. <laughs> <laughs> you can, if you've got that much money, but you're that far in debt, but you're that famous, you're yeah. going to have all the resources at your disposal to be able to do it down to a T. I do think appearing as Dave, Dave, and as I say at the memorial stuff. You've got to have balls bigger than mine, mate. And I've got some pretty big balls. But to do that, you've got bigger balls. Yeah. Isn't it? But Prince, yeah, I mean, but then saying the that, CDs. but then saying that, that was Michael Jackson's personality, wasn't it? You know, yeah. you look at all the documentaries, Michael Jackson was a kid at heart. He was a yeah. jokester, a prankster. Yeah. And he loved messing around with things like that. So it would stand to reason that he would turn up at his own funeral or turn up at his own tribute concert. And of course, he's not going to turn up as himself. And now you can look on YouTube, you can look on TikTok. There are Michael Jackson impersonators out there that are bloody dead ringers for him. Yeah. So could any one of those actually be the real Michael Jackson in, you know, with a little bit of a change to his facial structure? Just to make it not so obvious. We don't know. And unless he physically pops up and says, my name's Michael Jackson. I, mean, I didn't it. die. Here's my DNA test results. I am the real Michael Jackson. You're never going to know. It'll always be speculation, like a lot of things. And that one that they're talking about in the chat room now about Elvis, I remember, I saw the, the picture of the guy that you were talking about. He was a homeless guy, wasn't he? And, and I'm sure he was down in, in Memphis, somewhere like that. Um, and he 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 was he literally was the fucking double, and he sang like him as well. But he was homeless dude, and it, it's like you know. But if you're that if you're that rich and you got that much money, why would you live as a bum? You wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have thought you would. I mean, I personally wouldn't. I'd literally go down the Highlander route. I'd. I'd Sort out fake IDs, fake birth certificates from somebody who died a long time ago, redo it, reinvent myself, and come up as a. <laughs> I personally, if I was someone like Michael Jackson um, and that was the situation, then I mean, to, to quash those sort of rumors. I think he had enough. My, like said, I think he genuinely had enough. Yeah, if, if, if he did deliberately top himself then obviously that was his way out. But if it was suggested to him, if we make it look like you're dead, go off to your desert island and live your life of Riley, the money would have to be there for him to live the life of Riley. Now, surely, if he's only I'm got a certain point, amount of money, if he's only got a certain amount of money, at some point, he's going to have to get more money from somewhere. Now, although his royalties have increased because of the sales of his albums have gone up because of his death, how is he going to get hold of that money? There is going to have to be proof there somewhere that Paris or, you know, his kids would have wired him money. He would have had that to would, have had extra money for yeah, him. Yeah, there'd be an electronic paper trail somewhere. Yeah, so there would be a paper trail of those transference unless, you know, say Paris has taken the money out in cash and gone over to this island and given it to him. I think it's one you know, of those things. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where you've got both sides of the argument, but the side that says he actually didn't die and he, he's redone himself, reinvented himself, disguised himself, etc., etc., etc. There's more evidence towards that than there is to say he actually went which is odd yeah. that and itself it, is odd 
And with that, you can go also with when you look at what the Catholic Church did with the high ranking German officials at World War II. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, for years, everybody had said, oh, you know, this German, he's, he's moved, he's, he's gone, he got out of, he escaped, and he's in South America and all of this. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, right, okay. They know or they knew that some of these people had gone and the, the Israeli. Um, special forces did that had that unit, didn't they? Where they went right, off yeah. to South yeah. America, yeah. and they managed to get some of these people back. Yeah. Um, they then had to face trial, but when it was discovered how they got there, and it turned out that it was the Catholic Church that removed these German officers and, and taken them to Trump various media, various places in Spain, including yeah. mon uh, Catholic monasteries where they were given plastic surgery, new identities, new passports, and then taken to the Canary Islands where they would meet a submarine and yeah. go across the Atlantic Ocean to Argentina and the South Americas. Yeah. And they're free. And they live for a long time, some of those, have lived for a long time without Look, being discovered. The, the father of modern uh, uh, space exploration. What's his name? Werner von... Uh, von Braun. Said, Operation Paperclip. Yeah, Operation Paperclip. And he that was to get them. that was to get leading scientists and doctors oh, out of Germany um, and straight into um, straight into the American system. The US um, will never do anything like this and don't know anything about UFOs. Bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> but exactly, I mean, I was one of the programs I was watching earlier on. Um, there was a program on here they were talking about. It's that film that's just been on TV tonight about the first, um, the coloured lady that ended up working for NASA. Uh, what was that, I, back in the, the, in the 50s? I can't remember her name. Yeah. Set in the 50s or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're using the Atlas rocket. Oh. The Atlas rocket. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind, it was during the week, where I watched an Atlas rocket being launched into space 70 years later. Oh, can you do me a favour? Still please? using it. Can you do me a favour, please? I, I uh, witnessed a, an online conversation the other day saying, why on earth has Wayne been invited by NASA to do this, that and the other? I know, I know, I know you. I know you've been invited to previous NASA launches. Would you like to tell everybody... Just why you got invited to that launch? Because I got rather annoyed about that. Who was it? it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was just an online paranormal conversation that I happened to literally come across, and I saw your name, and I went, "Huh?" huh? And then I put in there, "Hang on a minute." No, he bloody well was. You know. Right. The reason why I am invited by NASA to either attend or watch the launches is because I have always had a long fascination with space and therefore registered with NASA a long time ago. And they asked me if I would like to attend either in person or virtually. And you always share their, their launches and everything. And I share theirs and SpaceX's launches. And, and it's I because of my fascination with space that I do that. And so far I have got two passport um, stamps um, with NASA, I've also been invited to the next one, which is the launch of Lucy on the 16th of October, and that's a satellite that's Lucy. going to be going off to examine Jupiter's moons. Hmm. See, I, I literally, I, was, I can't remember where it was, and I, and I was flicking through, and I saw your name, and I, it was one of those, you know, when you go, digga, digga, oh, hang on, and I went back, and I, and I read it, and I was like, no, 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 and I clicked in there, went, hang on a minute. And I, I, I did. I stood up for you and went. So it was, it was a general conversation. It was, it was on, um, it was on, it was on a conversation on Facebook, and, and they were, whoever it was was talking about the NASA launch, and somebody else said about you putting it up there, and they were like, "How the hell does he get all this? I don't understand why." And it, and it was, I think it's all bollocks and this. And I went, "No, no, 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 no," no. And I went in and I waded in, and I said, "No, no." <laughs> I know, I know, um, Jacqueline Dixon. I posted a thing about it because all these people had, had posted pictures. 
I've seen it on Facebook. A lot of people have posted pictures going, oh, my God, what's that in the sky? It was it was to do with one of the pictures that somebody had taken with the plume. Yeah. It was all Yeah, and basically that was that was the re-entry stage of one of the sections of the Atlas rocket that no, had no, gone a up. Mine, a friend of mine took a picture from the UK of that, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Joe, two things. First of all, if I did know the name, I wouldn't mention it live on air because I'm not like that. And secondly, no. genuinely don't remember. It was literally one of you know when you're scanning through all your stuff and he and something will catch your eye and you go, Oh, it was that. I was, I was flicking through my stuff. I saw Wayne's name and I went, hang on, and I read it and I went, hang on a minute. Look, and I waded in and went, Don't you fucking dare. So yeah, stuck up for you. Yeah, I mean it, it it's just because I I in particular with Landsat Nine. Landsat 9 is is part of a duo. There's two Landsat satellites going around Earth, and they're mapping the Earth. And what they're designed to do is they're designed to actually monitor land shift and land usage. So like with the, the current situation in the Canary Islands with Las, Las Palmas, that volcano's blowing its top. It's reached the ocean now, which means that island is going to get bigger simply because of the amount of lava that's going into the sea. Hmm. So the idea behind that is that Landsat will be able to monitor, to monitor that. They'll be able to monitor which direction the smoke's traveling in. So what countries is going to get affected by that smoke, how the land mass is going to transform the surface of the earth in that particular area. And ultimately, if that volcano erupts any further, they've got a possibility of 500 billion tons of rock Splashing into that ocean really quick. And if it does that, Florida bites oh. the dust. Joe's telling me to calm my tits. And yet, literally, a page of Joe going, who was it? Who was it? What was the group? What was the names? What was this? Don't tell me to calm my tits, woman. <laughs> I'm not, I'm at, Wayne will tell you, if, if you're my friend and someone's giving it a load of crap and you're not allowed to back it up, I will jump in and say, no, 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 no. And, you know, I've known Wayne for yeah. quite a while and uh, I've seen his, his your previous uh, NASA things and I know damn well you were asked by NASA to do this and it had a lot to do with you being in it from the start and you sharing everything. And that, that's the whole reason why you were asked. Um, and yeah. it just annoyed me when I saw it. I literally saw your name and I went, oh, went back. I can't remember it. It was on Facebook, I can't remember I saw your name and I saw somebody like da, 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 da. that's why I waded in and went, No, don't do that. Yeah. He, he was genuinely asked to do it. So if you don't know, don't open your gob. In reply in reply to Andy, um, if you go on to you can either go on NASA's Facebook group um or go on to NASA's website and you can register your interest in the launches and they will send you an email to invite you in to either the, the, the virtual one. Yeah which is the main one that they do for people overseas because obviously it's getting to the venues. Yeah. Um, so I was going with the virtual ones because they're, they're easier. But what you do is you go to lectures at the same time, which the general public don't get to do unless you actually are part and parcel of the registration and the system that they use. You can access um, all these lectures. And I, I attended one after the, uh, I think it was the day after the launch, as Landsat was getting prepared for action and they were going to bring out the solar sails. We had a, a lecture about the um, forest fires and things that were happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and with Las Palmas, they're all still going on all over the world. There's still forest fires going on in small areas. There was one they were talking about, one in Canada. Fucking but there was a wildfire. Um, and they managed for about two or three years now, haven't they? And they had to you know there was a small wildfire and they were able to monitor it using the Landsat 8 satellite. Shows you how good they are. And they, they were so the basically they were showing you in the, as part of this lecture. Um, it was with the Landsat headquarters and Houston, uh, the, the main NASA section in Houston. They were talking about the different uses of the Landsat satellite. And saying about the current operation system they're going to be using once Landsat is fully unveiled. Yeah. And, you know, it was about an hour and a half long, this lecture. And then as soon as I'd come out of the lecture, I got an email from NASA saying, congratulations, you've got your, your, first, your first NASA stamp. 
<laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, what they do is because you're part of their system, you get a, you get a NASA passport. Oh, okay. And as you attend certain lectures and certain launches, you get a stamp to put in your passport, and you can actually print this passport out. And then you can use, with your scanner and your printer, you can actually print out your stamp to put in your passport. You're going to have to, um, uh, in the week, we'll catch up, uh, hook me up with that, because uh, yeah. I think uh, I need to do that as well. But um, now it just annoyed me. I, I get really wound up when, um, I, you know, with, with, with good friends, especially ones who know what they're bloody well talking about. And then you get some know-it-all in a group who knows fuck all. You, you get it all. The, I get it all the time. You know, people turn around and say, oh, how the hell has he managed to do that? But it, it's not just a case of, you know, I, whether I've been lucky or what. But at the end of the day, I've, I've done a lot of hard work to be in the position I'm in. And because I've shown my interest in space, mm. I've shown my interest in NASA and SpaceX and what I do, I've managed to get myself on these registration lists. I've managed to get myself in there and have conversations with people mm. that are in the know about all of these things. And as a result, that's the end result of it. Well, it's, it's like um, with me, uh, uh, you know, and, and the radio show, et cetera, et cetera. I, I went for quite a bit to get to this now. But it's like with the martial arts, I've had so many people, you know, see that, oh, you're full of shit, you're this, that, and the other. And then when I say, right, research this, research that, look into this, look into that. And then it's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. And it just winds me up when people who don't take yep. that couple of seconds just to go doo -doo 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 -doo, and look it up. They'd rather just gob off. And uh, I don't like that. That's it, Joe. Yeah, got it in there. Two points there. Joe says, and people are jealous. That's why, which is spot on. Yeah, yeah. Nine times out of ten, the reason why they come out with comments like that is because they're jealous because it's something they want to do and ain't got a clue how to do it. Um, and it's Hidden like Figures was the film we were on about. Hidden Figures. Yeah. Well, we, we mentioned it on here and we did, couldn't remember the name of the show. Uh, name of the film, but Joe said no. it was called Hidden yeah, Figures. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but it, yeah. that's all it is, is just pure jealousy. And at the end of the day, I had the same thing when I was asked to uh, present Truth Beyond Paranormal. That kicked off a stink with a couple of people because they were upset that I'd got invited to be the presenter and, uh, and they didn't get invited to be a part of the show. And I'm like, that's not my fault. I'm not it's in like, charge. I was asked it, and that was it. it yeah, and it's, it's like this now. It, it closed for about six months, I think. And then eventually I thought, do you know what? And I got hold of Kerry and that lot. And I said, do you mind if I, re you know, start it up again, but do it as it's supposed to be done in my, with all the all the swearing and the cursing and the laughing and the joking and the stuff that did Kerry's head in. And she's like, yeah, go on, go for it. And I did. And so many people are like, how did you get there? You must have done this. You must... No, no, bollocks, mate. It's literally my gob that got this where yeah. it is. And me and Wayne, we've been, we were in investigations together and stuff. And we've known each other for quite a while. And it's and I said, I didn't, I got hold of you and said, how do you fancy doing yeah. this with me? And that's why we exactly. did And that was when the same situation with Sam, our director, I walked, you know, obviously most haunted was history. Um, and then our, our director... Sam Beck, she contacted me and said, would you like to come and present our online show that we're doing? Yeah. And I said, what's it all about? And she went, paranormal, but it's not just going to be about haunted places. It's going to be about cryptids. It's going to be about UFOs. So I said, that's fine. I'll do it. Then we came out with the, the, the name of the show. The first name we picked was already copywritten. So we changed it to Truth Beyond Paranormal. And two years later, we're still recording episodes. Exactly. And being asked to, I, I was actually really flattered that you guys asked me to be a guest on one of your shows. That's why I was, I was like, yes, I'm going to do this because I was chatting well, about it. The thing was it, it was, it was my suggestion to do Rendlesham Forest. And, and I'd said to Sam that the thing is, we need to do something other than just haunted locations mm. because we're all about different aspects of the paranormal. So therefore, we need to do something like Rendlesham Forest, 
So we said, right, set up Rendlesham Forest. Then I suggested that we had a guest come to certain locations with us as well um, to sort of have a bit of a break from having the yeah. same faces all the time and things like that. So I said to Sam, let's ask Mark along. He's known as the alien guy. So Aliens! let's get Mark in to do Rendlesham Forest with us. Yeah, um, And obviously, Sam respects my input into a lot of things regards to the show. So... She's like, yeah, we're up for it. So there was there was no 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 talking about it, no discussions. It was yep, yeah, just get him on it. No, and, it was brilliant, fucking brilliant, absolutely. And, he, brilliant. and it's the best thing when we first started doing Truth Beyond Paranormal. We had fifteen team members. We've now got it down to about six or seven. Oh. Um, and it's ideal because now we we all get on. We're all like family, and that's the way we like it. And then you get the odd one person goes to Sam, well, why wasn't I invited to be part of Truth Beyond Paranormal? I've known you longer than Wayne has. So she blew him out of the water and said, well, actually, I met Wayne a lot earlier than I met you. So jog on. Plus, thinking, we don't like you. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. You and I are on a, are on a US. No, we're on two <laughs> shows coming up. We're on an American show uh, next weekend, aren't we? Saturday, the ninth. Yes, hang on, I've just got to find the thing for it. Uh, literally, ah, uh, here we are. Uh, yeah, hold on. it still for a bit, allow it to focus. <laughs> hang on, I'll see I if I can get it up on mine. I can do it. Hang on, I'll see if I can get it up on mine. <laughs> It is uh, the the Woodline Beyond, and this guy is a uh, Yeti encrypted uh, investigator. There it is. Yeah, that's us next weekend on this show in America, and we've got another show to do over here with a couple of people we investigate with, which is going to be good. Um, but the thing is, it's like all this stuff. I've had a few people, you know, say remarks and this that, and the other but one thing i have noticed with this is is since it's been our own entity a lot of people that are new in the paranormal world have gone back and don't talk anymore which is quite sad to see but yeah it's i mean the thing is when i when i stopped working with most haunted i was i'm sort of saying to myself well, what shall i do hmm. what do i do now I, i'd already got my um my events group and i'm thinking that's all i'm going to be doing i never expected anything else then my mum suggested to me that because you've written all these ghost stories start publishing them put them out there so i'm like well, okay fine so i started to publish them and then all of a sudden sam comes along and says you know will you be the presenter of truth beyond paranormal for us hmm. and it's just gone on from there and as a result of doing those three, just those three things, I've had the likes of Gary Bradfield ask me if I would do the Parafest. Right. I've been invited to public events with, with various groups because of what I know and my knowledge and my experience. And, it, and it's only because of my hard work that those things have happened. It's not like nothing to do with anybody else. As far as I'm concerned, Most Haunted was just part of that platform yes they helped me in a sense to get where i am now hmm. but they've probably helped me get where i am now a lot quicker than i would have would have done if hmm. i was on my own and unfortunately in the paranormal world, <laughs> there's a lot of fake people out there there's a lot of people who are your friends yeah. but when uh, it no longer suits them or yes. no longer helps them along their road to ambition they yep. suddenly forget all about you I never did that, you know. Uh, like like Kerry, we still we still talk. Um, Carl Hutchinson, we still talk. You know that there are um, quite a few others who I can say, no, we don't. Purely because I don't. I no longer suit their needs, and I no longer suit their. What you got to remember is, I do this yeah. because I like doing it. I'm not out for the glory. I'm not out for the fame. I'm not out for any money. I do it purely because. Yeah, I like exactly. Doing it. We do what we do because we enjoy it. Exactly. Um, 
again with with the likes of NASA and SpaceX, I have always enjoyed everything to do with space, not necessarily to do with aliens and and things like that, but with space in general. I've uh, watched not, not just necessarily to do everything. with what aliens. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, but I always, I mean, you know, my parents took me to Stansted Airport to see the space shuttle when it came into Stansted Airport on back on piggyback on the jumbo jet. Yes, that's fucking hell. That was a long time ago. Jesus, the pyramids were around then. The fuck? You know, so it was things like that. You know, I was I was there. I went to these things. Um, I went to Kennedy Space Center when I was about six or seven, and I actually stood next door to the Saturn V rocket. You know, well, that thing was fucking huge, and it was ma it was massive. I have pictures of me pretending to be an astronaut on the moon and you got one of those you know the old seaside cut out things where you got the face yeah, cut yeah. out and you poke your head through and go Rrr. well i got a picture of me and my sister doing that with a an astronaut and a moon buggy awesome you know Have so you it's things the like that uh i think i had a couple of years ago with my, with my parents and my son if you go to the natural uh, history museum they've got the um uh, the big, the whole NASA thing in there, and they've got us. Uh, what was the one that landed on the moon? Uh, the uh, Apollo. Ele is it eleven? Well, they've got one of the moon, the moon modules yeah. from from one of the Apollo missions. They've got it in there. Yes, they've got. They've got well, no, 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 no. That's not the moon. Uh, now that's the command module. That's that's, that's, that's the, yeah, the yeah, one that got came the, back to Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. Got that. And they've got uh, two of the suits, and they've got um, two sets of boots. And people were saying, "No, it's fake, and it's this." And it wasn't. It was if you looked at the boots, you'd see different soles. Yeah. One was a trainer boot where they used it in the desert, the Mojave Desert, to do the training. Yeah. The other one was the one that they used on the moon, and that had like weird teardrop things on it, and it was only designed for use in moon dust. Yeah, interesting. So as well. I mean my interest in space has been has, has been around for pretty much the same amount of time as the paranormal. Hmm. Um, so, you know, when people, when people say things like that, I'll just let them go on with it because it's got nothing to do with them. I've well, so been in the right place at the right time. And with a lot of hard work, I've got where I've got to be. It's like you, you, you with the space, I'm, you know, me with the cryptids, you know, it's, uh, yeah. Wayne with space and I like that with cryptos, cryptozoology. But people, all I can say is this if we were this, that, and the other, we wouldn't have the show. We wouldn't have our, this show, would not still be running nearly seven years later, 10 years later, whatever the hell it is, in various different guises. It wouldn't still be here now if we were full of crap, you know. So, yeah. um, I don't and, it, and it's the same, same with me in the Royal Air Force. I've got the opportunity to go back in as an officer. Now, the only reason why I've got the opportunity to go back to an officer as an officer we is because that, I've studied my ass off and got degrees yeah. with Oxford and Cambridge that have allowed me to pass the entrance test to be an officer in the Royal Air Force. I would rather personally start off back at my previous rank and work my up to earn the respect, not to be gifted it on a plate. But at my age, that's something that's not going to happen. And the but thing because is, I've, because I've already got the experience and the knowledge, it's a lot easier for me to accept going in as an officer. I was about to but it's about because to say, of my hard work that I've done it. I was about to say for for those of you watching, we we've had long conversations about it. Wayne's going back in the uh, RAF Royal Air Force. Force. Yeah. I'm going back in the TA. I was an SI a long time ago in the light infantry which is now the rifles and i'm going back into the ta at my old rank which is a, an si sergeant instructor he's going he's going in it as a as a officer you know so uh, you know. A but, uh it's it's one of those things again offered it i not my thing it's genuinely not my thing i don't want to be an officer because i'm used to yelling and shouting and this that and the other and i'm good at it you know oh you get uh, opportunities to do that as an officer trust me i was just about to say you've got the voice anyway so you know, 
it's uh it's it's going to be good just watch your space just watch this watch your yeah. space but for all those doubting thomases and everything this show wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our love of the paranormal and that encompasses all different yep. bits the only reason we do it is because we love doing it that's it because we don't make any money at it there's no fame there's no glory it's just we love bringing the crap and giving it to you guys <laughs> you know I mean, in reply, in, in reply to Joe's uh, comment there about the education side of things is now online. Um, I've just worked my way up to, in business to a diploma status by doing online courses. Mm. I haven't. Mine are physical. Mine were all physical courses. Um, you know, all my courses weren't done in front of the computer screen. They were actually done in lecture rooms. Um, but you know, the, the problem is, is diplomas, when you do online ones, they're so easy to obtain because they're all online. I've, I've the got information is at your fingertips. But, yeah, mine were all done in the classroom. Mine weren't done online. All mine were done. Yep. In I've got the well, letters. I hope, you, I hope you can get it, Joe. I've got the letters BNMAA. I'm supposed to use after my name. Never have done, never will do. All it means is British National Martial Arts Association. Well, um, apparently after I got my um, law degree, apparently after that, I was supposed to have 26 letters after my name. It's, it's silly, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, my name is Mark. <laughs> my name is Wayne. <laughs> Off, and it was, and it's stupid because I'd got I I'd, I'd already got like the um, when I did chefs courses I got the seven oh seven uh, the seven oh six one and two and the seven oh seven one and two and each one of those qualifications came with three letters after its name mm -hmm. so I'm like right okay so straight away I've got twelve letters after my name then when I did all my degrees with Oxford and Cambridge it then increased it and then apparently. I had 26 letters after my name, so. But I'm also I'm also a lord. Myself and Ellen are Ladies both and lord and I could lord say and lady. So much to that, but I'm not going to. <coughs> not as in gay lord, no. Um, <laughs> um, myself, myself and Ellen are lord and lady of Chow Glen. How much did you pay for that? We didn't. We were given it. <laughs> I knew there was something there. And, and legally, and legally, I can have that on my passport. And no one can batter an eyelid. I am legally a lord. And there's nothing anybody can do to do it. But I don't use it. It's, it's just a paper title. It don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> there's a... Uh, uh, I'm not going to mention any names at all. Uh, there's a, uh, a gentleman in a mo in a motorcycle uh, organization who uh, goes under the, a title of Lord such and such and such and such. Again, I'm not going to mention the name. But the thing is, whilst they have been, him and his wife have been telling everybody that he is Lord such and such and such and such and such. Mr. Bollocks, mate, has been looking it up online and typed into it and this, that, and the other. And the Lord such and such and such and such that they say this person is died. He was a real person and he died. And he's not there. <laughs> this person is impersonating the person who died. Yep. I don't know anybody knows that, but I, I, oh yeah, I bloody do, mate. You know, and uh, it's like these Walter Mitty ones, isn't it? You know, I'm part of the Walter Mitty groups that are going around calling out all these people that are going for false valor, and uh, the amount, the amount of people that are going around in military uniform where the badges are all in the wrong places, yes, they're coming yes. out with all this crap about, yeah. oh, well, I served here and I served there, and I'm like, did you really? Yeah, right, okay. Considering well, not, that squadron was never wife, involved there and you're wearing the badges in the wrong place. <laughs> Do you know the difference between having a medals there and having a medals there? Sorry, say that again. You're... Do you know the difference between having a medals there and having a medals there? I can't remember, mate, to be honest. Right. 
That side, you earned them. That side, yeah. your relative earned them. Simple as that. I, to be honest, I always wore my grand when I did remembrance um, services with the Cubs, and then on to Sea Scouts for some reason because oh that was why I couldn't get into Air Cadets because the queue was too long. Um, when we did Mem Memorial Sundays, I was allowed to wear my granddad's medals, so they were always on my left my left pocket. When I got my um, my rock service. Then it went on the same side for some reason. It was always on the left. My my Iraq service one went there. Maybe it's a difference between the army and the RAF. Yeah, your medals you wear on the left. Your families or descendants or whatever on the right. You wear on the right. You don't. No, 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 no. That, yours, theirs. I always had mine on the left. Maybe because you're RAF and you're all knobs. But that was, know. that was, um, yeah, but what I'm saying is that was when I was a kid. I was in the Cubs yeah. and I was allowed to wear my granddad's medals. Oh, so I just wear, I just wore them where I'd always seen them on the left hand side. No one bad an eyelid. It's probably because you're in the Cubs, mate. That's why. But it's, it's kids. No one's going to tell a kid off. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, who's going to tell a six-year-old that wants no, to honour the dead? You just said about the people that pretend, and that, that fucking winds me up, is the, the people yeah. who pretend that they were in the army or navy or RAF or whatever whatever service, and they, they say, oh, we did this. I, point of fact, my mum dated a guy, not going to, again, I won't mention his name, reckoned he was ex-SAS. Now, my father was ex-SAS, and not just SAS, but he was Special Forces, who then went on and worked for MI6 out of Whitehall. Um, and he knew a very famous person that's made books about spy people. I digress. Um, I only know a couple of my dad's, my, and he's dead now, I only know a couple of my late father's stories, because right up until he died, he would not tell me. He couldn't tell me because of this and the other. Now, this little idiot that my mum went out with, and I mean little because he was like, come up with there, she brought a beret and a tie that, with him that he showed my mum, right? Now, your ex-forces, you wore the beret? Yeah. What's the first thing you do with a beret when you get given a new beret? Mould it. And how do you do that? Like in ages. We had to right. wear ours all day. Right. With ours, you cut the lining out. You, you've got the leather band, and you leave that much above the leather band, all the way around, and the bit where your cat badgers, again, you leave a little bit around there. And then you'll turn it hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Two weeks of going, ding, 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 ding. You know? And that's the only way you'll get decent shape. Cut the lining out. Yeah? This we cut, never did that. We we just literally soaked it for a couple of hours and then slammed it on our heads and we just no. kept it on even through day. Cut the lining up. This just guy, literally. this guy brought the beret up for my mum and I can remember seeing this fucking beret and it was brand spanking new with the lining, everything in it, and I can remember going, "Fuck off." And he was one of those, and he reckoned he'd been in the Gulf, and he reckoned, and bollocks, mate. No. And it was a brand new beret. Brand did new. He, and the tie was new. Did you ask him Did you ask him to put it on his head and it come out looking like a French baker? I, I asked him to wear the beret, and it, and it, wasn't, it was not shaped. He could pull it down, but it wasn't shaped. It, it, it's also the same as, um, it's also the same as bullying your shoes. Yeah. I mean, I was always taught, I mean, the Army and the RAF, point blank, straight away, I'll tell you, is different. Because with the RAF, you don't ball your, your boots. You just polish them normally in the RAF. Right. Um, but with our number, number our number one shoes, which is the equivalent to the Army's number two yeah. shoes, yeah. <coughs> all we did was ball the toe caps. Yeah. And that was painstaking because you would put a base coat of polish on, and then with a little piece of cotton wool and some a wet it. cotton wool, dab it into your boots, boot polish, and then in slowly over hours and hours, go round in tiny, tiny circles, Wrap pulling the, the shining, 
and you'd be doing it for hours on yeah. end, yeah. getting this mirror shine. And I remember, the cloth and... yeah. But we used to use cotton wool or, or a duster or, or something yeah. like that to just so you could just go around and man in circles. And I remember a friend of mine, um, when was it? We were in Aldershot at the time. We were at St. Omer Barracks down in Aldershot. I know Aldershot Barracks very well. And um, we were down there for a while. And we had to... We had a, that's where the mix are at the moment. Yes. Aldershot well, the, the mix... There is uh, Navy, there is Navy, Army, and um, well, it was Air always Force. Paris. It was always Omar. Paris for years. Old yeah. Barracks was the power barracks. Yeah, well, we used their gymnasium down there. Right. That's fun. I like that. Oh, no, um, so, of course, we're down there. We've got a full kit inspection. And my mate has been at home in Yorkshire for, I think it was there for about four or five days, something to do with his mum. Uh, he got compassionate leave, so he'd gone back up. He'd come yeah. back only to find out that we'd got a full kit inspection the following day. Yeah. So he has absolutely pooped himself because his number one shoes aren't as shiny as they should be. So there's him up until, I think it was about one o'clock in the morning, pulling his shoes and not getting anywhere fast. So what does he decide to do? Oh, God, go on. Right, he goes... Shortcut, he said. I learnt this one in the army. No, so went, right, okay. So he gets a candle, lights it, tips it over, drips the candle wax over the toes of his boots, uh, toes of his shoes. So gently caresses them with warm water to sort of help get the shine up. He gets them; they look absolutely perfect. And Nothing when wrong. You put them on, how many cracks appeared? Clear as oh no, getting to that bit, clear as glass these these shoes were. So we're like, right, okay. So we've had to go out onto the outside the front of the block block. Flight lieutenant's come along, so we've had to come to attention. And of course he brings his feet up just as the just as the flight lieutenant gets to us, he brings his foot up, clonks it down on the floor, and yeah. the whole the whole toe cap of his shoe goes. <laughs> There's candle wax flying in just about every direction. He ended up with five hours of jankers in the med centre for doing that. He had to do an hour after every shift each day. He had to do an hour jankers in the med centre as a result. I'm, not <laughs> I'm really like, that would teach you a cheat, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not really surprised. The only time you melt anything is the boot polish and you put a bit in the lid and melt it and then put yep. it on. You can't paint them, Joe. You literally, the only way you're going to get away with it is by bullying them. Anybody that comes to inspect a full uniform and expects to see bulled shoes, they know exactly what they're looking for. Yeah, you, you, you it's can't. the same. There's no <laughs> when I when I when I first joined, the first literally the first couple of weeks was all about rifle training, and we would have the toets test. And basically what that was, was breaking down your rifle, taking it all apart into all its individual pieces, cleaning it, putting it all back together again. Now, RAF Regiment are quite well known for being first-class assholes. Did you get the order? I'm using a two-penny piece as a depressor. <laughs> we did. No, we had to hold the muzzle of the SLR, not an SA-80. No. The SLR we were using... We had to hold it straight on. Oh. Like that, by the muzzle. Right. And did he take his and time to go along? We had to stand in line and he would go along and he, we'd have to obviously already cock the rifle so it's yeah. ready to fire. He would go along and press the trigger and he would listen and he'd go, something wrong with that, break it back down again. Next person. Click. Yep, that's all right. You're okay, go and sit down. Next person, clonk. No, break that back down again. And he'd go along the entire line. And the one on the end's like... And, yeah, and as soon as his back was turned, we're all like, oh, no, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And he, he'd do it, quick look, just to make sure, so make sure we weren't cheating. But we're standing there and arms are dropping and we're propping our arms back up again. It was hard. Yeah. But 
you got the discipline there, you got the training there, and you, you eventually learn how to do it properly. But they know exactly what they're listening for. And it's the same with the shoes. They know exactly what to look for. And, of course, my get... mate obviously didn't notice it. And bang. <laughs> As, you know you know this one. Um, I like the way we've gone from paranormal to this. Um, when I, I know, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. When I did my SI, SI, when I did my SI course, and I did my second half of it on top of uh, Oakhampton Barracks in Dartmoor, um, and a jumped-up little Rupert called Captain Ryder, dickhead, um, telling me, because of this, we don't want your sort in here. What the fucking hell do you think you're doing here? You're going to be a disgrace to the fucking uniform. Best thing you can do is cry and go home. 22 years old. I was in my late... No, I was in my early 30s. Um, and to be fair, they pushed me and pushed me and pushed me and pushed me way beyond anybody else. And I've got metal leg as well. And they fucking pushed it. At the end of this, my instructor was at a tank commander called Simon Kirby. And he was one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. Londoner. And uh, I was debriefed. And he's come. He's, he's all fucking hell, Mark, mate. Out of everybody here. We've lost. And we've lost quite a few. Quite a few. You had a bell. If you if you fucked up, you went and rang the bell. And they say, right. Yeah. Fuck home. Right? And goes, We've had quite a few go through. Fucking hell. Then they've all rung the bell. Fuck, 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 fuck. And you're and you fucking and you've done this and you fucking and you fucking fuck 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 and he's like and he literally and he turned around and said I want to shake your hand it's been my pleasure I've never had this with anybody and he did and I was fucking choked you know yeah and this Captain Ryder's up fucking doing the, the the rest of the debrief and then he's gone and stood by the door and we've all been given our fucking final beret now and I I put it on I've gone up to him and I go fuck he told you I'd do it sir. And to this day, if I ever see that little twat, oh my god, I'd knock him the fuck out. Oh, sorry. But yeah, that but I mean, you, of that. you get you that. You can't do this because you're that. You can't do this. Oh, you want to bloody jinx it? Yeah, well, I got told that the other day when I was doing when I did my MOT. I had my little medical, and and she turned and she went, "You're clinically, you're clinically obese." I think Joe needs a sponge in the chat room. <laughs> no, we don't want to use Tom Hardy. What is your morbid fascination with Tom Hardy? Can you imagine if they um, read it less than a gentleman, but in the British Army? <laughs> you know, it, I've lost track of what I was saying now. Let's put, let's put me right off my train of thought. No, it's not. No, it's not the kettle that's the problem. I've just... <laughs> Joe says, make us a brew. <laughs> Um, you know, I could be better than Tom Hardy. I love the voice of Venom. Oh, you like it? Don't you? Oh, <laughs> no, you can't bite the head off. Oh, just a little bit. But no, I mean, I mean, going back to all this at the end of the day, people can say what they like. I don't care. You know, I've I've worked for what I've got, and I work, and I will work for everything I want. As well, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is that why we're friends, and that is why we still do this shit. And this I couldn't hear that, mate. Up. The kettle was too loud. I said, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we're friends, and why we're doing the shit that we do, and why all, and why all that with the uh, uh, the services. This is why I'm going back in it, and he's going back in it. Because at the end of the day, who would you rather have? Having your back, somebody like myself and Wayne, or somebody like Captain Ryder. I knew where I'd rather have, with you know, getting my back. Yep. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'd rather work for what I got, not get it landed on my uh, in you. front of me. And there are so many people out there that, uh, even in the paranormal world, that are just take, 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 and never give back. Oh, and I've personally God. experienced that a few times. Um, yeah. with with some people that, you know, in in the paranormal world, it's you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Um, and this is why so many people will say para-unity doesn't work. No, it won't work if you're it not work, willing not to scratch somebody else's back after they've scratched yours. There's it's so give and many, take. 
there's so many people who now <coughs> who ne are, are now on TV, now have their own TV programs, and they forget where they started. They forget their friends, and as soon as anybody dares mention it to them, they're in the wrong. How dare you say this? What are you talking about? I worked yeah. for Blake. No, 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 you didn't. You got a lucky break, and you became famous, but you left everybody behind and forgot about everybody else. Well, I'll, I will say something now. When Truth Beyond Paranormal recorded its first episode and stuck it on Facebook and YouTube, a certain, certain TV show contacted our director. Wankers. And, <laughs> and thanks, man. And told Sam to quit. That oh, they will. Would this be a will... certain TV show where people go ah all the time? Yeah, for no apparent reason, and throw stuff for no apparent reason. Oh, um, yes, yes. She was told to quit. That we would never get on TV. And our yeah. swift reply was, <laughs> "Up yours. We're not doing it for that reason." And that's and they didn't like the it. Difference. That's the difference. I love doing doing that episode in Rendlesham Forest, but at the end of the day, again, we don't get paid. There's no nope. money, no fame, there's no fortune. It's purely because I love doing it, he loves doing it. That's why we exactly. do it. Exactly. Even, even when we do go to a location, like when we filmed at Harrods Readout Fort, we managed to do it so that we were able to do a public event first and then record afterwards. We did yeah. it with Rough and Control Tower. We did a public event I love, first. I love Rough and, Tower. and then after Rough and after after we'd done the public yeah. event, we then yeah. stayed there for a bit longer to record some other bits for the show. So with that, that was covered. But normally, like with Harrods Readout for if it was just going to be the team itself recording an episode there, we would have looked at how much it was going to cost and say, right, this is how much per person we need to put in the pot. And that's it. And nine times out of ten, with somewhere like Harrods Readout for it worked out that if you have got ten people, it's fifteen quid each. Yeah. You can't even go out with a paranormal investigation team to that place for fifteen pound. I think, quite frankly, TBP needs an extra member on their team. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I made a mistake of drinking too much of that. <laughs> <laughs> Still needs an extra member, you know. Hey, uh. I mean, yeah, but the problem is, is your location. But then saying that, we do have Peter Ling and Annabella who are in Scotland. Yes, yeah. And so, obviously, if when the opportunity comes um, and we end up in Scotland, we've got two team members up there. So, you know, eventually we depending on how things go for the time being, we try to do things more central and then we're going to start expanding to go and further afield um, as and when we need to. Um, but, you know... we well, if you need a member in the north, just, just give me a shout. You know full well we'll ask you. I know. Jack Sam already said, already said that, so it's like, cool. But, it, yeah, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we do it because we enjoy it. it it's for our, not exactly. only for our own satisfaction, it's because we enjoy it. We want other people to experience what we experience. It's just a shame that the cameras that we used at Rendlesham Forest weren't good enough to pick up those exactly. lights that we saw in the clearing. Although, having said that, it did pick up the bloopers because what you guys won't see is we've we've got the bloopers we've seen the bloopers and some of them are fucking like, like when you're you're talking on camera and go blah, 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 that when i came along went oi, 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 on your nipple and walked off and you went <laughs> <laughs> actually they will get to see them because sam puts a blooper reel on at the end yeah. of every episode brilliant. so brilliant. Yeah. that was one thing we always said we would do was was you know obviously when we do live feeds people are able to see what we're up to, uncut, unedited. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it should be. So it is Truth Beyond Paranormal live. Then, obviously, we edit the episode and people can watch that. So if people watch that and go, yeah, that was a pretty good episode. How many live feeds did they do that night? Oh, well, there's about four hours worth. So we'll watch that full four hours of that episode that they did live. 
And all Sam will do is take the best bits out of those live feeds and put them in the episode itself. And to me, it works. Andy's just asked if you're going to come into Stratford with us in November. Unfortunately for me, Stratford's too far away. Um, and I've got Ellen and the kids to think of, which is annoying as hell. It's just there's just me and my um, ghost will go tail will look after ghosts for me. I'm down yeah. I'm down in Stratford and I'll be doing some lives for the Dark Mirror show from Stratford with all the other team members. Andy, as you know, is one of our Dark Mirror uh, radio show Thing, yeah. team members. He's one of the team. So, Andy, you and your missus will be live with me on the 27th several times. Along yeah. with a few other team members. Um, and it's like, I'll tell you, another guy I love doing an um, investigation for, Paul Rook. He's a fucking legend, that guy. And the shit he comes out with. When, when he's doing a Ouija board and people go, fear me, you fuck, you fuck, you fuck. And he's like, Fuck off, and then carries on with what he's doing. Brilliant, but uh, yeah, there'll be, there'll be. In fact, that will be the Dark Mirror Radio Show's inaugural, 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 inaugural investigation, uh, because Andy will be there, uh, and there's a couple of others from another team who want to yeah. be part of our team who are going to be there as well. So yes, I mean, obviously, I'm in. You know, obviously, I would, I would love to go to as many events as possible, but. You know, I'm I'm now April, May, June, July, August, September, October. I'm now six months behind the release of my next book. Well, that's just not good enough. I'm, you know, it was supposed to have been out at the end of April. We're now into October, and I still haven't released it. You know, I re you know I bought another set of books off you, and you, and you yeah. signed them. On that I found them in a drawer the other day. They, somebody didn't take them with them. Those are mine now, and I'm starting to fucking read those bitches. So, so yeah. you've got two sets. No, I've got one set. I've got one set. Right. I've got the complete set. So, That's for right, Yeah. So there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, Joe, if you can, you're welcome to come along. Uh, I know you, you have issues and stuff, but if we can work around them, you're more than welcome to come along. Uh, Joe finds some interesting stuff out on the internet, and she's one of our sort of researchers on the team now, isn't she? Yeah. And Andy also finds very good stuff, and he's a team member as well, and he puts it up on our on our group wall as well. So uh, Andy's going to be there, his missus is going to be there, and there's quite a few from you know when I did no you were there when we did um. Kelton. Yep. The ladies from Kelton are going to be there as well. This is why I kept asking if you wanted to go because you know them all. Oh, that's yeah, I know. <coughs> that's just, you know, obviously, I mean, we're now at the state, well, we're at a critical stage now. Um, almost just about ready to start moving stuff to the new house. Um, been slugging me guts off over the last couple of dates trying to clear wallpaper off the walls only to discover purple paint the original purple paint who were we talking father, about earlier huh? purple Prince. paint purple paint <laughs> <laughs> yeah no my 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 real dad when they first when my dad real dad and my mum moved in my my dad had painted the downstairs hallway and the stairs, bottom half of the stairs, bright purple. Ooh. Was this bright. the 70s? Oh, no, yes. Uh, 1974. Bright purple. All the rage at the time. So, of course, I'm like, now we're moving down there. We need to redecorate. My mum's wallpaper's a bit dated, so we need to redecorate. So I've gone down there, started scraping the wallpaper off, and lo and behold, there's that 70s purple paint staring me in the face. I'm like, shit, whitewash. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I lived in London. Yeah. Um, before everything happened and we left, we uh, uh, stripped all the wallpaper in the hallway because it, it was literally burnt orange. The, the, the whole of the hallway, and it was a long-ass hallway, and it went up 
and then like that, it went like a Z. Um, yeah. And it was burnt fucking orange. And trust me, when it came home after a few beers in the pub, you didn't want to have that looking at you. And it ended up, we took, I think it was 12 layers of wallpaper off. And in between, it got, I think it got to like layer eight. Uh, somebody had glossed, not painted, but glossed the walls. And no matter what the fuck we did, we couldn't strip it properly. And it took us two weeks just to strip the wallpaper in the hallway. God, that was a pop that asshole to do. Ugh. No, down our, our last house, we, we decided we were going to re wallpaper or paint. Um, you know, like most, obviously, most stairs were banisters, yeah. aren't they? But these ones were actual sort of old thin wooden panels all the way down the stairs. So once you got in through the stair doorway, you were covered. There was no yeah. banister there, so you're behind these panels. So we thought, well, we'll get rid of this paper on these panels, and then we'll just paint over them. Yeah. So, of course, I went to start scraping the wallpaper off, and I'm like, there's a lot of dust in here. What's going on? And when I lifted up the paper, the second I got to the very bottom piece of paper, literally met the air, turned to dust. It really? broke up so easily, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. How old is this wallpaper? Doing my mum and dad's bedroom, I found the same thing. And that house was done in 1974. All it had ever had was wallpaper. But rather than strip the wallpaper, they just put new wallpaper over the top of the old one. So, of course, when it comes to stripping that, I'm going to peel the wallpaper back and there's going to be the original 1970s wallpaper. And I'll be like, hey, you left some of this dust. It's not. It's, like, it's, it's like that. If, if I've been away on exercise and I come home and I need to change out my boxes, as soon as I drop my jeans, it goes poof and turns to dust. Terrible. I mean, the other day when I was working, I was putting stuff up in the loft. I had no choice. I spent the day like that because the amount of Mortal Kombat, the amount of dust that had kicked up, I had to put my face mask on. Yeah, it was it was nasty, and I'm like, Jesus, eight. We need to get some filters in here. <laughs> but it's worth time. it. But the problem the problem I've got now is that <clears throat> over the next month, I've got to get all the stuff from this house down to the new house. And then I've still got to redecorate this house before I can redecorate yeah, the yeah, other house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, got a lot of hard work ahead of me, but it's got to be done. Artex. Oh, Artex is a bitch. Anyway, I've just seen the Andy's time. right there. Wood chip. wood chip is a pain in the arse. I hate wood chip. I've got a, um, a steam stripper because I, I did yeah. our, our whole kitchen. I stripped all the walls and that. And that was that was Artex and wood chip. And Sugar so soap. No, no. We tried that. No, nope. the, the steam stripper straight through. Problem. The problem is you've got to make sure that the glue is off the wall as well. The wallpaper paste that you used, the the steam strippers don't necessarily get all the glue off the no, wall, so you have sponge. to use something to wipe over it. Yeah, you need a big sponge. As soon as you've done and, it, you get a sponge. Yeah, well, luckily, what we what I've done is I've used um, sugar soap and washing up liquid in in warm or hot water. And then, obviously, you wipe the paper. Once you've taken the first layer off, use the, literally with a, a sponge or a scouring pad, you just put the sugar and soap water mix on there, and it just rubs straight off. You just get another a towel or something and just wipe it all off, and then it's ready for painting. My walls are all now battleship grey in the kitchen. <laughs> um, anyway, it what is... What I should have been doing is making my parents do it. Yeah, you should. Have. I'm not fucking doing it. It's their bloody house. <laughs> well, it is uh, two and a half hours later, um, and I still we still not any further on about what do you think about using animals in the paranormal? <laughs> do you know the one thing that sticks in my mind about animals in the paranormal was a certain TV series that used to take their dog along, and whenever anything happened, the dog would go fuck that. I walked off. Yeah, I'm off. <laughs> well, that's a big like the rest of them, wasn't it? Mm. You know, the dogs like us owners. 
He's it's out walking up the stairs. Oh, it's a ghost. You There's a ghost on the person. stairs. In a hoodie, looks kind of like Ali's in. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't think actually using animals on investigations is necessarily fair to the animal. Because obviously you've got a lot of a lot of criteria to fulfil there. Are the location owners happy with you bringing an animal in? Um, you know, okay. Human beings are quite happy to go out till two or three o'clock in the morning doing paranormal investigation, whereas a dog or a cat at two or three o'clock in the morning is happy being curled up in a ball fast asleep in a nice warm house or whatever. I was about to say, also, with, with investigations, uh, you've got that thing where somebody asks you if you'd like to do that, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're just like, come on, come on, you can do it, and they're like, fuck off. You know, yeah. As has been seen on certain investigations with certain famous people, the dog gets dragged along, and the dog's like, no, yeah. fuck off. You know? Yeah. Do they, they then try to force it into doing something, and I don't think that's fair. Um, so I don't think animals should be used on investigations. Um, but as regards to animals being sensitive to spirit, I'll definitely agree that they are. Um, I think they're more sensitive than humans. Yes. As, as a natural ability. I think as humans, yeah. you, you, a lot of people have it, and then they have to learn how to use it. But I think with you would eat. Animals, it's there the, and an innate ability, you know. The the problem is, and we've said it before, is that you know, as a child, where you haven't learned anything, and this is quite possibly where the imaginary friend the situation comes yeah. from, is the fact that they are seeing spirit. But as education um, gets involved and um, your peers sort of leading you in one direction, your mind tends to close off. Yeah. And if your mind closes away from it, you then stop having that ability. If your mind is still open, then that ability is still there. It's before we disappear, pointing, I'll literally prove this one. Both my daughters, there's 18 months between the two of them. It was a bad night in telly. Um, Taylor doesn't, she's got, she may have slight uh, ADD, something like that, but that's it. Uh, not on any medication, never has been. She can see uh, uh, spirit dwellers, she can hear them, she can sense them, she can tell you if they're good or bad, she can tell you if they're near, and she can tell you what they're saying to you. My eldest daughter used to have the same ability, but she has various mental health problems. Um, she was on medication for it. Everything quietened down. The, as she put it, the voices that she, she she would hear when she was in certain places quietened down to the point where she couldn't hear it, but she could still see them. Then she got pregnant. I had to come off her medicine, but the uh, the baby growing in her kept the set those abilities at the same level as when she was on medication. Now, since she's had the baby, um, they said, we're not going to put you back on medication for a while because she seems to be doing all right. Her abilities are still on the level of, I can see him, can't hear him, can't tell you what's yeah. going on. And it's the same, my granddaughter, which is my that daughter I was just talking about, her eldest, uh, my granddaughter's nearly three, and she stands in the hallway talking to a spirit lady, and we did an experiment. I think I told you about this, didn't I? We did yeah. an experiment, and we was trying to get out of my, my granddaughter, and she has got mental health issues, and she can't talk properly in this at the other at the moment, bless her. And we were trying to get out of her who it is she sees. Um, and we was firing all these questions. She's like, nope, 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 nope. And I went, hang on a minute. And I found a picture of my grand, my, my late grandmother. And I and I said, is this the lady that you see? And straight away she went, hmm, yeah. And she points to where she talks to this lady every night. And it's my grandmother comes in to a certain spot of the flat, stands there, talks to my daughter, and then does that and goes. So Joe knows about it because we've spoken about it, and Joe's Joe's clairvoyant, clairsentient, and I said about my, my, my nan, and it's my grand that visits what would be her great, great granddaughter. And, and my granddaughter, who's never seen 
any pictures or anything of my nan before, straight away pointed at my phone and went, eh. and it was her. So that's what I was trying to get at. Nearly three years old, has not been brought up in a household where it's, no, you can't, no, you can't, go something, go something this. And she's like, yes, that's who you'll see. And then yeah. as you're older and you're brought up like that, you lose the ability. And that's that's what I'm trying to get at, the difference is. Nearly three years old, can see and hear spirits. When you're older, if you're brought up with, no, 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 it's all rubbish, you lose it. Exactly. Or leave it. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, because obviously you get outside interference, and this is where we say in various various shows in the past, where we've turned around and said that, you know, a lot of the religions of the world are all based yep. on ways of yep. life, how to live yep. your life. But in that process, they're teaching you these things. It's closing your mind off to the real things and the real issues that a human mind would go through. And it's how to live your life through them. Yes. Not how you're supposed to leave your and life. That's, and that's where people's minds get closed off because they've been indoctrinated into this system, exactly. this way of life, and it stops that ability. Yeah. Those people that have that ability are those people that have managed to break away from that indoctrinization of society as such. And that's why you can still do it because you're not part of that system. Unless you're a famous TV show where things happen all the time. <laughs> and you wear a baseball yeah. that comes down to here and you yell at demons. Yes. That are every, every week something happens. It's a demon. It's orbs. It's... No, dude. You have small man syndrome. Pull your baseball cap off the bridge of your nose. Give the others in your team a chance to talk and stop being a rude, arrogant little Watson. Oh, and as for the British TV program, no. <laughs> Simply no. <laughs> Just Simply no. no. Stop it. Do you know what? I would rather cram this entire bag of Toblerone into my mouth all at once and try and recite the alphabet backwards in Swahili than watch that show ever. I thought you were going to say shut up at your ass. Well, I think I think actually sticking that whole packet of Toblerones in my mouth and trying to recite the, the alphabet backwards in Swahili is quite a good thing to do than watch that again. I always I remember, try I'm not, not going to mention the show. I'm not going to even name it. I'm not going to mention any of the people on it. All I will say is I can remember one episode in a prison, right? In a prison with a blank walkway whatever you want to call it in front of you with the cells on either side and a spanner suddenly comes flying over the heads of everybody and lands in front of one of the presenters and that that presenter goes ah! and screams this doesn't happen in real life on investigations ever yes and, and conveniently conveniently fucking Zach Baggins with his baseball cap there, swearing and shouting at demons, come forth and bugger off, mate. Be a bit I more think, respectful. Joe, it's pat your head and rub your tummy. Yeah. Is that? Sounds like I'm knocking one off. So yep, I can that. do that. <laughs> I got a ball there, mate. But, yeah, exactly. I mean, at the end of the day, conveniently, what's a spanner doing there? Um, now, if they were if they were investigating, maybe the Michelin factory or the Ford factory. If you weren't investigating maybe, the Michelin factory, you'd see me. Maybe I could understand there being a spanner if they yeah. were investigating the Ford factory, not a bloody prison. Uh, and it, it's it's again, so many people diss me because I don't like Zach Baggins. And they'll go, oh, leave him alone. He's... No, 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 no. You guys fancy him. That's your prerogative. You crack on with that. Mm -hmm. But I've seen the stuff from when he's not an heir and, and this, that, and the other. And he is so rude and disrespectful. <laughs> and everything is a fucking demon or it's an orb. Bollocks, mate. No. Pull your baseball cap up from there and you might actually let the blood throw go, go to your brain and you might stop thinking everything's a bloody demon. You shut uh, up. So Joe's just come up with a classic one. 
What do you think about them using the flashy balls? It, it's just a new soap I use. The flashy balls are something that other teams have been using for absolutely donkeys. And because they didn't think of it... And because they didn't think of it first, they're making it all out to be the latest gadget, and it's not. I was using flashy cat balls two years ago on investigations. There's no difference whatsoever. One one thing I will say, for all the uh, naysaying and knocking, if it hadn't been for them and the, uh, the, the, the BBC show that went on before they did, a lot of us wouldn't be here now. So for as much as we knock it, they were the ones that put put us in the mainstream, you know. I still think Zach Baggins is an idiot, but that's beside the point. <laughs> he may be a good businessman, but his bedside manner when it comes to dealing with spirits is lousy. <laughs> that that is that's literally my problem with him, is he's so rude and offhand towards spirits. Don't well, Don't unfortunately, unfortunately, I've got to be careful what I say because I'm friends with the tech manager for them. So, okay, I'll say it for you. He's an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. It's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't say it. No, his other team members are like, but it, it's like I say. I've I've seen I've seen his shows. I mean, he's, I used to like his shows. I did genuinely used to watch them, and I used to like them. And then as he, he got very, you know, more and more popular and all the ladies started liking him, this, that and the other, he got more and more arrogant and more and more rude and offhand towards the, the spirits. Not not live people, but the, the spirits he's dealing with. And it, it's that. That's, that's my problem. You know, don't be like yeah, that. Um, like that. Yeah, Joe, the, the problem is Most Haunted was the first mainstream programme um, for the paranormal. There was that BBC before, one before it, wasn't there? Before then, you had in 1998, you had the Ghost Watch, which was a one off That's special it. on it Halloween was. with Craig Charles and um, Sarah Green and her husband and, and Michael was, Aspel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, that, that show, Ghost Watch for me, was sort of like boosted my sort of want to go out there and do paranormal investigations. Nothing to do with Most Haunted. No, 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 Joe, you've got it the wrong way around. No, no, no. I, before the main stuff on the TV, we were we were regarded as the tin foil hat brigade. Uh, yeah, people were always interested in in the paranormal before that, but but before that, we were regarded as as the fringe society. And we were all fruit cases. And but since that, we take it seriously. <laughs> Guess what, Mick? You haven't got the DVD of that. It's upstairs. And Mick, you didn't see the triangles or the UFOs above us either, did you? Mick says he's got the DVD of that. No, he ain't, because I've got it. <laughs> you lend it to me, you donut, and I've still got to give it to you back. <laughs> but you see what I'm getting at? Before that, we were lunatics. We were a freak society. We were people don't listen to. But since that, it's like, oh, actually, they may be onto something. But that, but that's the thing. It, it's, but it's look. If you look back in history, everything was the same. Someone turned around and said, oh, "I've just invented something that can toast, that can make toast, not uh, bread, go all nice and cooked and brown." And I'm going to call yeah. it a toaster. Everybody had gone, "Oh fuck off! Don't be so bloody stupid. Just put it in front of the fire. That'll do." Oh yeah, but this is more convenient. You put it in your kitchen. Wake up in the morning, come down, make your coffee, stick your bread in there, and pop the thing down. Nah, 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 don't be stupid. Now just about every house has got one. Joe, that's that's literally exactly what I've just said. That that's just what I've said. Uh, Joe said, no, no, what I was to say, someone like me who lived in an active house and still do, we weren't allowed to talk about it. As time has gone by, we've now got a voice. That that's literally what I was talking about. Um, before those two shows. We we were all. It doesn't matter if we're in an active house or what. I was in one when I was a kid. We were we were looked upon as nutters. But the advent of those shows, and then predominantly most haunted, we were regarded as oh, actually these guys might actually know what they're talking about, and it's it's helped so much. We as much as we slate it, it has really helped us. 
Yeah, I think most a lot of the paranormal investigation teams that are out there and a lot of the shows that are out at the moment all sort of have to lend credence to the likes of Most it's Haunted. I don't, it's absolutely you know, true. I don't think there is any show out there that will be able to turn around and say, if it wasn't for Ghost Watch, we wouldn't be doing it. The American shows weren't around before Most Haunted. Most Haunted exactly. came along and the American shows were, oh, hang on. We need to do something like that. It, well, exactly. I mean, if it wasn't for Most Haunted doing an entire series in the USA, Zach Bagans probably wouldn't have gone, hang on a minute, we need our own team here. We need our own investigation show. You know, we don't want the British lot coming over here and tell, showing us how to do a paranormal investigation. We can do it ourselves. Then all of a sudden, we're... boom, in comes paranormal. I mean, regardless of the throwing of stuff, do you mean doing investigations with a bit of respect towards the ones that are passed? Hmm. Stranger. Yeah, well, I mean, the problem is, and again, it all goes down to, again, you've got the likes of a certain UK TV show, slags off a certain US TV show, and the UK TV show goes, oh, I've got footage of Zach Bagan saying this and doing that and blah, blah, blah. And you're just like, so what? What are you doing? You know, what point are you trying to prove? At the end of the day, people yeah. will watch your show People will watch their show. Whether they're concentrating on demons and you're concentrating on what comes out of your ass is besides the point. People will watch both. They watch whatever they want. It's the public's choice to decide no, what they want. Exactly, 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 exactly. And it's not a slight. <laughs> it's not meant nasty against that baggins. It, but it's just from a have, like yourself having done this for fuck knows how many years. You know yourself in real life what the end result is of being very rude on an investigation yep. of spirits. You know that. I know that. Most investigators out there know that. But when it's broadcast as an entertainment series, it gives people the wrong idea of what you can and can't do in an investigation. And that can lead to a lot of nasty stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I will admit, you know, obviously since 2004 maybe earlier, you know, I was sucking into into the, the I don't know, the be-all and end-all of paranormal TV shows. Um, and then after I left, I never bothered watching it. Yeah. People would say, people will message me and say, oh, did you see most on it? I'm like, no, don't watch it. Do you know how I used to like... I um, even, I, do you know I what, Mark? I hardly even watch our own shows. I've only watched one of our shows all the way through, and that was the one that I edited on Dunnage. The very oh, first nice. Dunnage episode is the only one I've watched all the way through, and that was because I edited it. I used to watch Tap Taps, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. Yeah, I used to watch them, and then they did uh, the international one with Joe, you know, with Joe Chin on that, on that lot. And I used to love that, but. The only one I've watched in, re in recent memory that I've really enjoyed uh, was Paranormal Lockdown. You know, with Kim Weidman and the other chappy who used to be with Sat Baggins. Those two. Yeah. I, I like that. The thing is, though, I'm, I'm more... Oh. Timothy Claypole and Miss Popoff. Yeah. Mr. Claypole. <laughs> um, the thing is, though, I would rather oh, watch... Yeah. I would rather watch documentaries about yeah, the paranormal yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because they're not for entertainment purposes only. No, not, they are documentaries. So they don't have to go with the entertainment purposes only paragraph. So I will watch things about um, the Sasquatch, so UFOs, ghosts or whatever. Today, I was watching a documentary called Behind the Curve. I Absolutely bloody hilarious. Behind if you get curve. to watch it, yeah, if you get to watch it, it's on Amazon. All right. And it is about Mike Michael Sargent, who Why do I know that name? Is a complete fruit loop as far as I'm concerned, who is convinced the earth is flat and surrounded oh, by no. a two hundred oh. two hundred foot high wall of ice. What? My answer to it is Elon Musk, for God's sake, put him up in one of your SpaceX rockets so you can stick it up his ass. Because has he been, has he been watching Game of Thrones and gone, We're going to the north? 
<laughs> the Ice Warriors cometh. Um, but no, I mean, this this, this show was literally purely said, about... No, 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 hang on, hang on. You just said it, the Ice Warriors cometh. If an Ice yes. Warrior cometh, does that mean you're going to get showered in icicles? Anyway, carry on. <laughs> yeah, this bloke was going to conventions. There was people giving him gifts left, right and centre and paying for him to travel to their, their little meets and things like that. All because he is convinced the earth is flat. And, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy is making a living out of an ancient, ancient belief that the earth was right. flat. Right. We, we, we have mentioned this so many times on previous shows. We've done an entire <laughs> show on this. So, for all you flat earthers out there... <laughs> Wayne and his missus have four cats. I have two cats, possibly three cats in the next month. If the earth was flat, all the things on the edge of the world would have been fucking well knocked off by the cats. <laughs> no! The thing is, Joe, he's not going to be right. Because there's too much proof scientifically that states otherwise. What's cats got to do with the... Pro oh, my God. <laughs> you have not seen our previous shows, Joe. Hmm. You know, I mean, this, this guy, is he's convinced that we're on a disc surrounded by a 200-foot wall of ice, um, even though people have sent him videos going, so, OK, if this planet is flat and it's a disc, where the hell is that plane going? and has actually shown them mm. an aeroplane in real time travelling over Antarctica. Right. We, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. You can put a balloon two miles up in the air from whatever point you are on. Now, if the Earth is flat and you've got the Emirates Tower in Dubai, you can put your balloon, and if you go two miles up, you will see all the tallest structures in the world <coughs> all the way around you. If the world is flat, if you are two miles up, you will see all the tallest structures in the world. No matter what anybody says, you will see them with binoculars. How come you can't? How come there's a horizon? How come there's a curvature of the earth? And how come, as I say... All the things haven't been knocked off the edge of the world by cats because cats are wankers. <laughs> okay, Andy, I found your answer. It's not where the term hang on comes from. Hang ten, phrase... hang ten or hang on comes from surfing, doesn't it? No, the phrase, the phrase hang on originated from the invention of cloth hangers in the 19th century England, given the way they remained attached to whatever surface they are placed. People started to use the phrase hang on to mean holding on tightly or not letting go. Soon it made its way into everyday use. Ba -bum. So there but you go. Again, gravity, gravity. Again, gravity only works it's because really it's central and everything is attracted to it. it it's like moisture and dust. A water droplet and loads of dust in the atmosphere. The dust is attracted to that water droplet and clings around it. Have you read the disc world? Anybody out there who knows what a disc world is, you'll know what a flat earth looks like when you go to the edge of it. And there will be dragons. You, <laughs> you will know what the flat earth looks like. We don't have a flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Discworld, greater to him, four elephants. I rest my fucking case. We don't have that. <laughs> but he's, yeah, but it's like the ancient Greeks, wasn't it? Atlas was holding up the world. That's where the word Atlas came from. Yeah. Um, but it didn't mean that if we looked off the edge of the planet, we'd see this giant bloke holding us in, on his shoulders. It, you know, it was a mythological thing, uh, you know, and it, it's. It's, it's, again, all because of religion that is saying it. Oh, uh, uh, um. but, uh, but the thing was, in this, in this programme, the bloke went to a big party to do with a solar eclipse. 
or in, yeah, the moon passing in between the sun and the earth. All right. I'm just looking at all the stuff Joe's putting and, in there now, and I'm like. And the thing is, what made me laugh was he was standing there going, wow, isn't that amazing? And he's looking at it, I'm going, I'm sitting there saying to myself, so are they discs, are they? A round spinny thing with another round spinny thing going round it. That well, no, conveniently. Thing. Right, what I, what I don't understand is obviously <laughs> somewhere along the line, the earth is flat. That's their salute. That's how they say hello to people. They do that. You sure it's not? Hello. Like Hi there. <laughs> but he goes he goes to this party, right, for the for the eclipse. Yeah. Now, oddly enough, the planet is flat. It's like that. It's just a flat yeah. surface. Okay? We're like this. Well, he's standing on Earth that's flat like that. He's looking at the sun and the moon, but he's like that. So why is it the sun and the moon are like that, and yet we're like that? And Mars, oddly enough, is like that. Jupiter, oddly enough, is like that. Like that. Saturn, like that. So why is it the Earth is like that, and everything else in space is like that? Hmm. I've got some activity. What are you on about, Joe? That's why I said Elon Musk needs to put this dickhead in a rocket, put him up into space, even if it's only for five minutes, let him see that the Earth is actually a globe, it's a sphere, and then let him radio through to say, okay, I admit the Earth isn't flat, just before they jettison him into space. It's like the, the Facebook group of the Flat Earthers, and it, it said, what was it? It said something like... Um... 14,000 members around the world and then and then somebody's put underneath it just read that back to yourself exactly they just make themselves look like bloody idiots but they he reckons he reckons that they are on the on literally on the brink on the brink of having as many people believe the flat earth theory as people that believe the earth is a sphere right. i'm like Oh my God! How many people do you think are on this planet? <laughs> the thing is, the thing that gets me is is more people would rather believe that the Earth is flat than believe that there's life, intelligent life on other planets, and that's a sad thing. And to be honest, I think there's more people on this planet that think there's life on other planets than people that believe the Earth is flat. Ten years ago, it was the other way around. Well, hundred. To be fair, years, now, yeah, you're away. right. Now you're right because we wouldn't be doing this bloody show if we didn't think if we thought that. Yeah, you're right. Now it is, especially after yeah, but, the conflict. Yeah, but when you look at it, like if you go back, I don't know, a couple, three, four hundred years ago, they thought the Earth was flat. Hmm. Everybody thought the Earth was flat. Now all of a sudden, then, then all of a sudden, it's no, the Earth is round. Everybody believes it, and then. Do it goes back the other way. Joe's just saying about that in the chat room. Do you think there's actually life on Mars? I think there may possibly be something underneath. I think there was, at the moment, yeah, as it was. stands, yeah. there was definitely life on Mars. Yeah. They've proved that. At one point, Mars was capable of sustaining life. It had oceans and lakes and everything. Yeah. It had oceans, it had lakes, but the, the actual um, the atmosphere became so thin that life could not be sustained anymore. What happened to that life is another question. If the life had generated or evolved enough to evolve at a quicker pace than we were on Earth, yeah. then they might have done something about it. There are theories there that people from Mars have realised the danger they're in and come here. Or they've gone underground the on Mars. I sent you. Sorry? Did you ever read that or look at that CIA report I sent you? I looked at some of it, yes. Because that was... I know. I'm being told off. I'm not telling them off. I'm just saying this is the longest it's been. This is, actually, actually. This is the record for us. Coming up for three hours. This, before, we, before we go, 
the CIA report had a, a, a remote viewer in there, and the remote view, viewer um, was they were literally given a set of coordinates, yep. and that was all they were given. It was just numbers, nothing else, nothing else with it. Uh, and they were given these coordinates, and this person focused on these coordinates. And they wasn't it. It was Mars a million and a half a million and a half years ago, at the end of the Mars's life cycle. And they were saying about the massive pyramids that were there, the the atmosphere thinning, and um, uh, the remaining few were left there waiting for the ones who'd gone to find a sustainable place to come back and get them, and it never happened. Well, I mean, all the similar answer to that is look at H. G. Wells's War of the Worlds. Why yeah. did why did the Martians come here? In the lightning. No, no, no. Why did they come here? Stop them. That's Steven Spielberg's bloody Hollywood bullshit in the lightning. Because their planet was dying. It was dying off. That's spot on. But they didn't come here in the lightning. That's Spielberg's version. The H.G. Wells version, they came in big cylinders and they landed in Woking. My first kiss was uh, uh, on the... Uh, Not on Orsal Common, please. No, no, no. The, the car park on top of Toys R Us in Woking. <laughs> My first but they literally, the cylinder, first cylinder landed in Horsall Common. Yep. The Martians brought out their heat ray and zapped everybody in the immediate vicinity. They then built their tripods and then went on a rampage towards London. And then just as they were coming out the other side of London to take over everything, the bacteria kills them off. That's right. <laughs> and this is exactly the same problem they faced on Mars as, as far as the story goes. Their planet is dying, so they needed somewhere else to go. So they came here because it was more hospitable planet. They didn't realise and didn't think of the bacteria, which is what they found in the fossils on Mars. Yeah. I... There's, I don't know what it is. There's something about that report when you read it that there is something there and it, 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 it you know like we are about legends well you know when i've always said legends uh, uh, and cri especially cryptozoology a lot of it is misinformation and, and miss sightings but the original legend the original story had that little spark that started it and that's what it is for me and that that cia report from a a, a remote viewer who didn't know bugger all about what they were sent literally if you're given a piece of paper just with some numbers on it and you're told focus on that nothing else yeah and you don't know what the hell this is and you're coming out with all this stuff makes you mm. wonder you know? music. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen if you hear a loud quacking noise it's because wayne's just gone over there to shart his pantaloons that's what it is. He's now going to come back in a minute after going like that. And he'll be back in a minute. And as we see the lovely Ellen in the background with what looks like a big toe poking out from her bottom. I'm not sure why it's there, but, you know, it's uh, lovely to see. I'm glad you're you're sporting the uh, uh, naturistic foot look. <laughs> I'm just sat here trying to paint my nails. I did that. <gasps> Fuck! <laughs> I'm never using that sulfuric acid again. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> Not many people know this. This book was officially authorised by H.G. Wells' estate. And is actually a sequel Lift to War of the Worlds. Oh, cool. The Massacre of Mankind. It's actually a sequel. There is a few sequels, some official, some unofficial. But this is an official one as mm. authorised yeah, yeah, by yeah, the yeah. estate. Um, and it's basically how we managed to work their technology and use you it against like them. The governments are not doing now. Yeah, um, and we sort of like take their technology and we're here to fight them when they come back again. There is another one which I've got somewhere, I think it's in my bookshelf somewhere, um, where we actually take the attack 
to Mars. Ooh. And we actually, the nations of the world join together and a massive armada of ships head off to Mars to take the fight to the Martians. But that one, the, the massacre of mankind is pretty good. Have you ever seen either of the Iron Sky movies? Yeah, I've seen all of them. They're horrible. But the Iron Sky movies actually encompass three of the of the uh, conspiracy theories we've talked about. Yeah. In a, in a complete bollocks way, but really interesting the fact that somebody's bothered to take three of those uh, conspiracy theories and go, do you know what? I'm going to make a movie out of this. And it's been, it's been for Car Crash TV, it's been really good. Well, there is. Um... Apparently, there is three iron skies. Three? Three. I've seen two. There is only two for official release, but apparently there was a third one being made called The Ark. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Zippy. But, I mean, the first two were bad enough. Um, there is an official trailer for it as well, but... Oh, actually, at the, at the end of the second one, they, they, they're on Mars, aren't they? And they see the Russian uh, building that's done in the hammer and sickle right at the end. I don't know. I mean, it's. I've come up on it. I put. In, I put in on the search engine. I've put in Iron Sky Three, and it's come up with Iron Sky Three: The Ark. And yet, it. I don't know. China Film Co. What? So, Planet Earth, four point five billion years BC. Hang on, here's something Joe's just said. Uh, what about Titanic? What's your thoughts? Uh, the Titanic was swapped with its sister Both. ship over the insurance. Mm. Either way, but it was swapped <coughs> with sister ship because they didn't have the insurance on the Titanic at the time. They had it on, was it Lusitania, whatever it was called? Um, and that was the one that sank, and they were just like, oh. Well, the Lusitania was a little bit earlier than the Titanic, though, wasn't it? There were, there were two. There were twin ships. There was a Titanic and its sister ship. And um, the the White Star uh, line that ran it and had the insurance on it only had the insurance on the sister ship. And, and after the Titanic sank, they swapped it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... Just Again, it, it, well, they swapped the name plates and everything, but they only had the insurance on the one ship. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, the reason I know about the Titanic is because I have this uh, ancestors. No, I've got ancestors that died on it. Um. <laughs> That's the moon, apparently. That's a Chinese thing. <laughs> apparently, that was Iron Sky 3. Maybe it's the Chinese trying to tell us something. Apollo 18. Is what's, what's the one that we did a show on where it had found the uh, Martian? Apollo uh, 17. 18 Apparently. was the one that went back to go and find it, wasn't it? Apollo 18, the full movie. Nah, I don't think so, somehow. Oh dear, Bruce Lee versus Bolo Young. No, we won't go into that. That was in Name of the Dragon. And Bolo Young was only eight. I think he was 18 years old when that was filmed. Bolo! He was a big fucker and all. 
Yeah, he was. Uh, then he went into kickboxer as well, didn't he, with Jean Claude Van Damme? Uh, blood sport, blood sport. That's good. That one. That's where he does uh, the dim. That's right, and that was filmed. Uh, and let it was set the year I was born in Hong Kong. Yeah, because that's based on a true story. Well, it's based on Frank it is based on the true story of Frank Dukes. Frank Dukes, the the, the guy who uh, brought ninjutsu to America. America, yeah. Hmm. And kickboxer was done with a Thai, a very unknown Thai boxer called Tom Po, and he yeah. he he kept his name in the film, and that was his real name, Tom Po. Yeah, he was I always a... remember Miley Go Fuck. <laughs> yeah, how to how to piss off a Belgian? <laughs> or no? I'd have gone. Did she love you a long time? Twenty <laughs> dollar. Oh, what's that TikTok video that's on there at the moment of the lady boy? I wouldn't there's, know, but you tell me. No, there's <laughs> no, there's it's, there's a TikTok on there, uh, TikTok on on TikTok, obviously, um, and it's, it's, it looks like there's a lady and she's bawling her eyes out, and she you can hear this soft lady's voice, and all of a sudden she turns around and goes, "Show dog <laughs> across this field in this really strong bloke's voice, and turns back to the camera and goes, you saw a lady boy and you're like whoa I'm, i think he's run a mile <laughs> he's the other side of the forest oh dear i can always you know what before we disappear i always remember my mum and dad telling me because you know i was born in hong kong and they said about when they stopped off in singapore and apparently when they when they stopped off 1972 uh the, the u.s eyes were on gratuity in singapore the, all the ships were in and the they're on gratuity, and they went to a very famous place. In, in for those of you who know, you'll know what I'm talking about. Boogie Street in Singapore. Uh, now it's a, a place with cafes and stuff. Back then, it wasn't. It was as as infamous as the Reaper Bar. Okay, and um, they said my, I always, and both of them said said the same thing on separate occasions. They were in a cafe having a having a drink, and they were just watching life go by, and you could see straight down to the docks. And they said they watched this uh, GI with his mates coming up, pissed as a fart, this, that, and the other. And there was, it, as, as my dad put it so eloquently, not my mum, my dad, there was this thing wrapped around a lamppost with it with a long cigarette holder. Like, ah, oh, GI, yeah, 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 yeah me, me, fuck your $20, you know? And they, apparently they, they buggered off down, a, down a, an, an alleyway. Um, and I always remember my mum turning around and saying, about five minutes later, that this GI comes legging it out of the alleyway, going, oh, it's a bloke, oh, it's a bloke, oh, my God, it's a fucking bloke, and, and legging it back down to the docks. And apparently this guy turns around and says, and he, was, he literally, they'd been snogging, and he, he cupped a handful of family jewels and went, oh! <laughs> oh, no, my God, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, well, he learned the lesson there, didn't he? Not to do that again. No, oh, oh. <laughs> no, no. You know about past life re regression. I've actually asked a certain somebody from from another group to do a past life regression on me because of things that have come up in the past. I don't know if I've spoken to you about it, Wayne. Um, things have I'm come sure. up. Things have come up in the past. It went to do with some of my mannerisms and things, and it it. it it points to something. Yeah, else. I know. We we when we were talking about um, reincarnation and that, you you did briefly mention stuff about past life stuff. I'm still waiting for that to happen. Uh, basically, I'm I'm supposed to have been some sort of famous soldier, warrior, Spartan, something, uh, and there are there are things to do with me i'm not going to go into on here that confirm sort of corroborate it not confirm but corroborate it so i'm just waiting for the the uh, regression to see either either prove it or disprove it you know yeah and, I, and i'm actually looking forward to that so but we'll, we'll see what happens you know 
I could have turned out to be a champion knitter. I don't know. But anyway. You know my opinion on it. I think a lot of it is false memories and imprinted memories and stuff. From yeah, it could be. You go in expecting to be whatever and you come out with, you know, so I don't know. Um, mm. You were more than just that, Mark. You have been here more, uh, been here more lives, I believe. We will have to have a chat, Joe. Um, it's funny enough, actually, yeah, we were talking about this a while back, and uh, few things was there. Um, are you being gra growled at? I think we better disappear anyway. No, no, no. It's just, and um, um, I'll discuss it when we come off live. All right. Um. Yeah, anyway, guys and girls, it is quarter past. Nothing major. We have been here three hours, 15 minutes, and we're normally just an hour show. You you really are getting the best of it these days. So, uh, we are going to disappear uh, because, quite frankly, I need the ablutions. Uh, young Mr. Wayne needs to disappear and uh, have some time with his gorgeous missus and cats. I did have one of my gorgeous cats around here, and he's buggered off. Um, and I really need a wee, so I'll see you later. Yeah. <laughs> see you later, peeps. Um, next week I think uh, go back to the um, aliens and, and everything, and anything else that I find out, I will put on the group wall as per usual. Uh, keep your eyes to the sky, keep on looking out for stuff, and keep posting it on the walls. All right. Uh, Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for uh, watching and listening, and we'll see you. Your band's next week. Taylor, are you still watching us? My God, I thought you'd gone to bed. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow for a cup of tea, Taylor. All right. See you later, guys. And Wayne, I will speak to you in a minute. Bye-bye. <laughs>